Okay, nothing is breaking. All right, great. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the I Am a Professional, I Swear podcast. I'm joined by Admired Plague here. Uh, we are already dropping frames. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. Um, at least I'll have the audio for later if I want to fuck with this. But anyways, um, this podcast is basically getting into the mind of content creators, streamers, YouTubers, social media influencers, if you want to call them that, um, and seeing more about the marketing, the mental, and just the behind the scenes of what they do. Uh, so if you want to go ahead, introduce yourself. Well, Hi, I, uh, I'm admired. I'm Ed. <laughs> I'm admired plague, uh, full time caster on uh, Twitch. Um, I do a lot of horror games. I do a lot of survival crafting games. It's kind of like my, my my niche. I'm not a variety caster. I don't consider myself a variety caster. I, I do two specific things, and that is horror and survival crafting. If it combines both, even better. Seven days to die, the forest, things like that, um, kind of hit both of that Venn diagram. I do occasionally play other stuff, but um, not not very often. Um, I've been whew, I've been streaming for eight years. Uh, my five-year anniversary on this account is coming up in July, and my two-year partnership for anniversary is in ten days. So I've been on for a while. I've been creating content for ten years total. Those are on YouTube when it first came out, and uh, that was making Halo two videos. <laughs> so oh, here we are. Yeah, Dude. man. I had um. Back in the day to do to do Halo videos to create content, I had a capture card hooked up to a VCR. I would record all my gameplay to a, a VHS tape and then I would play back. I'd rewind it, play it back on the VHS tape to record it to my PC. And that's how I'd make my cuts too. I'd edit old school ways where you would cut tape essentially. Yeah. But I would yeah. just rewind it forward to the parts I wanted to. And that's where my edits were. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> So yeah, I've been I've been doing this for a while, and I can tell you a lot of the hardware has changed significantly. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my god, I remember when I first started streaming. Um, that was about when PS4 first came out, like that year. I can't even remember when that was. I know it's like about six years ago. But just the OBS has changed drastically. Like I remember it was either OBS or XSplit. Like those are your two options. Mm -hmm. And I think XSplit still, still never used OBS. <laughs> Oh wow! I've, I've been I've been using I've been using XSplit, man. You Everything. actually use XSplit? Use Holy! Yeah, they just came out. They just came out with 4.0, man. The new build just came out. Shit's I'm great. Gonna check that out. Damn. I mean. Yeah, man. Check it out. Okay. Cool. Well, let's it works jump. really well for laptops. Um, actually, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that out because <laughs> Twitch Studio is not friendly to laptops at all. No. No, their GameCaster software is really good. Okay. I'm gonna check that out. So, okay, now you started obviously, like you said, like when YouTube first came out. So, what was the moment mm -hmm. that you decided I want to do this full time? Ooh, um, so full time was a, many years after content creation started for me. Um, getting into it in the beginning, though, I was always like enthralled by uh, like AMV type stuff or like video game music videos um just like skits and stuff i've always been a huge media fan i went to school for broadcast media uh videography photography um i wanted to get into like the newscasting and doing like motion graphics and stuff so when i was a kid seeing um a platform for video creators for the everyday person not just tv talent um was awesome so you know i i was 12 years old when i think i started doing most of my stuff 12 between 12 and 14 and uh youtube had just started you know coming out and becoming more public and doing more things this is pre-google imagine that people don't know that youtube got bought by google it was not google yeah. at one point um <laughs> yeah, so that. you know seeing all these people just doing dumb stuff all day every day on youtube was like oh I got ideas. I could do things like that. I got a got a VCR. I could make some video game content. Let's do that. So I'd like throw on some Fallout Boy on a I don't know a montage of me sniping some people on Halo or uh, doing glitches and how to get outside of maps and just tutorial videos. And that's kind of where it started. But um, as far as full time goes, it wasn't until uh, right before I got my partnership, um, I had just lost my job. Um, due to several different things that were going on in my time moving and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, I was like, you know what? This is this is going well for me. I have a large community. Um, I have a game that I really enjoy that people come out for every single day. And I was making more money on Twitch than I was at my job. And I was like, 
this is viable. Like I ended up buying a house uh, when I was full time and that. it was awesome. And yeah. it, it was it was terrifying, honestly, because you never know when you're going to get your next paycheck. Well, you know when you're going to get your next paycheck. And back then it was harder because it was every 45 days, not every 30 days. So every month that or 15 days, sorry. So when you end now, you get your money 15 days later at the end of the month. So if you know this month here, when this comes to a close, July 15th, I'll get June's money before it was like a two month period where you wouldn't get your money to wait. Um, yeah. So it was scary. It's definitely a scary leap. And, uh, you know, the mindset behind going full time or finding another job is a very terrifying thing because you just never know if you're going to have money to pay the bills or not. But it worked out for me. It worked out for me really well until I uh, got another job that was actually paying more than what Twitch was making. <laughs> so um, it's think, always uh, uh, there's always it's always an advancement. Do you think that money management was a big part of it? Uh, money management? Yeah. Uh, yes, I didn't buy anything for myself for many years. I pretty much ate ramen and uh, like freezer packed veggies. <laughs> so, um, you know, I kind of stopped going out, didn't go do a whole lot of things. And my time was spent in front of my camera streaming. It did take a lot of toll on, you know, family, friends, uh, relationships, because it's a lot of work. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how much work goes into full time casting. And it's one of those things where if you want to do it, you have to understand that you're going to have to sacrifice other things. And uh, I made I made sacrifices to make it work. And unfortunately, some of those sacrifices ended up losing big parts of my life. So um, but that's that's what happens until you get to a spot where you're comfortable. Then you can start to kind of like relax on those sacrifices a bit. I was never in a comfortable state. I was always on the grind. So yeah. I had one day off a week. I was doing 24 hour streams every Thursdays, every Thursday for months and uh because that's how i kept my revenue up 24 hours of streaming with ad revenue was choice so <laughs> yeah that's i mean i, I make like uh, a dollar so it, off of like four hour stream so it's like hmm. <laughs> if i stream yeah, for 24 well, hours if i just stream for that's, that's like 27 dollars i can get hell yeah <laughs> um so i mean that's what that's what it comes down to though is it was uh you know it, i was something i wanted to do for a long time i want to try it out now i can go through life and say yeah i tried it i did it and uh i'm doing it again right now i'm a full-time caster again i uh with the whole covid 19 crisis and everything going out um ended up losing my game industry job because it was a live event position i can't do live events if there's no events to do so um now I'm sitting here. I just got on the stream right for this podcast. I stream almost every single day besides Fridays. And uh, we're back at it again and still comfortable. I'm, I'm actually comfortable, more comfortable now than I was before, which is nice. Good. But um, good. yeah. So can so. you name like any of your inspirations, like a specific YouTuber or creator? Oh, that oh yeah, hands like... down. Hands hands down. Markiplier, home, Markiplier. home state hero. Markiplier, home state hero. He was, uh, you know, raised in Ohio um not too far from where i live i've met him numerous times wonderful person very humble in what he does um he was one he's what got me doing content creation in general watching all of his let's plays for amnesia and uh, the original five nights at freddy's and a bunch of other horror games like that's why i create the content i create today is horror survival crafting because that's what he played and it's what always interested me as a kid anyways was i always played resident evil silent hill clock tower like all these games that were horror games when i was growing up i really enjoyed uh, doom uh, just to name a couple and uh, you know that's what he did too so I'm like oh hell yeah I could do the same thing so here I am doing the same thing but now more live rather than YouTube but he was a huge inspiration to get me started in content creation um, as far as Twitch goes though um, Eloheim and Silent Sentry were two people that I worked with very very closely and in Lyric three people that I worked uh, pretty pretty close with uh, way back when Twitch first started just after the JTV site closed down because I was on JTV first moved over to Twitch um, right before its second year started. Um, and we all played um, DayZ RP. I mean, we were playing Arma, we were playing DayZ, all these role-playing games. And Twitch wasn't that big yet. And uh, Eloheim was amazing with improv stories of just his life. And that's all you would go to his chat for. Like he had great content, but you went there because of the stories that he told about college and ex-girlfriends and all these crazy things that happened in his life. Um, so he was a huge influence to me. And I, to this very day, I still have a sub to his channel. I haven't left it. Same with Silent Sentry. Uh, Silent Sentry was good at what he did. He was good at role playing, which I loved. And then Lyric being one of the biggest non cam streamers on Twitch um, is still influential to me. It's like the dude doesn't show his face or any reaction, but yet still pumps out this content that's like triple A production. And it's so nice. So uh, oh, yeah, yeah, those three people are uh, those four total uh, are what got me into you know where I'm at today. So 
I don't think I saw. And still Lyric's do. I still talk to. Week. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. See, I've met I've met Lyric in person numerous times throughout PAX, um, you know, different partner lounges and Twitch cons and things like that. But um, never really, I haven't like talked to him. But I've always, I was always in his chat when like Twitch first started because his shit was just so funny. I'm just there like, hmm, what content is gonna create today, and how can I do that but better? And I never made it better. <laughs> but you know, it was uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's like so many people have like imposter syndrome and are so afraid to like try something that someone else is trying like just do it properly just ask somebody like hey i see that you do this is it okay if i do this like i've seen like people that have like different commands um i've had people ask me about questions about like my light system if it'd be cool if i like help them with set that up and yeah is just do it properly just ask someone before you start taking like things and saying oh yeah i'm the originator of this idea <laughs> i heard about this there was a there was a streamer i can't remember his name because i was only in this chat for a couple of days uh, I'm not very active in other people's chats simply because all of my free time is dedicated to creating content. So I'm just like, if I have five minutes, I'll go you. to somebody's chat. But um, he had this effect where when someone subbed, he would, you know, blow up his webcam and then there would be a trail effect of different colors mm -hmm. and basically copy paste of his face, but behind him, like I can't think of the actual name of it. But basically it was his face trailing around like the old school Windows XP mouse. And it was different mm -hmm. colors and i asked him about it i'm like hey how do you do that it's really cool and he's like i'm not comfortable sharing it because i shared it with somebody else they blew up and then they ignored me um yep. that's that's a huge thing that that popped up on twitter today something like that we'll get to that later though yeah so it, it's it's definitely something that's mm -hmm. for creators they're like they don't want to share it because they don't want to get backstabbed and i feel that and right. i think if anyone's watching this if you want to you know make your content better first of all i think just like you said, you saw content that you enjoyed, you spent time with those creators, and then you created similar content because you want to make stuff that you enjoy. Like you don't want to go out there, right. oh, this is the thing to do because everyone else is doing it. No, do the thing that you want to make because otherwise right. it's not fun and then you're not going to enjoy it and then your chat's not going to enjoy it. And when people say, oh, you know, <clears throat> you stole this from this idea from this person, look at all the, the let's plays on YouTube. They're all the same content. It's the same game, the same style. Here's episode one through five of this let's play. And it's the same you know, commentary about the same bosses, but it's slightly unique to each person. Like it's very similar style, but the personality makes it more unique. Yeah. So you can take an idea and make it your own. Um, I'm not sure if there's any anime fans that watch the show or listen to the podcast, but like My Hero Academia, all for one um, and one for all like this very similar concept where um, you know you're getting this power from someone else but make it unique to yourself and that's what Midoriya did he took All Might's power and made it his own and made it his own unique thing oh, so like it's the same thing or Airbender. Avatar yeah you know yeah, every, Avatar Avatar like you know Aang is nothing like the previous Avatars but nope. you know he has that same power he's just a very derpy 12 year old <laughs> very derby 12 year old who you don't want to piss off <laughs> no once it once his eyes go white run <laughs> run away um so kind of talking on that so obviously you have to keep motivation right and one of the key ways mm -hmm. of keeping motivation is i would say self-discipline but also creating content that you enjoy because you know you want to be happy with your own content but what are some key things that you do to keep going to keep yourself motivated to keep yourself disciplined goals um small goals always small goals never too nothing too crazy um i always tell my my family or whoever i'm living with at the time if it's by myself it was my my pet if it was with my you know ex-fiance it was her if it's my now it's my parents um i always say i'm gonna make a million dollars today i say to every single stream i'm gonna make a million dollars today will it ever happen maybe one day but that's one goal that could possibly happen but that's what like motivates me it's like what can i do today if it's a million dollar idea on stream what can i do today that will push my content to the point where someone will notice it, tweet this out and then blow it up. Cause it only takes one person to do that. Yeah. Um, but like, that's the overall like mentality, but I break it down into smaller goals. I would like to run, um, you know, these two games today for this time, I want to play with these content creators. I want to, uh, you know, possibly get five subs. So there's a five sub goal. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, you should, you shouldn't have a, a sub goal or you shouldn't have a, a donation goal. Blah, 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 blah. Why not? Like it's their yeah. content. Is it yours? No, worry about yourself. Um, you know, one thing for me, it, it's, people like to see the numbers. They want to see numbers. For some reason, if someone has a sub goal up and it's at three of five, someone's go, hmm, I can make this person's day by gifting a sub and subbing myself. Boom. You got your five subs. You know, it's like 
if you didn't have it there, the one has like the incentive or the want to to drive to do that because there's nothing visual that you know sets it apart or makes people want to do that. But if there's a constant little reminder that's like, hey guys, you know, subbing's cool. It's free if you have Twitch Prime. Blah blah blah. There's a number right there. People like to see that 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 number change and go places. Um, one of the biggest thing I tell content creators coming up is if you're doing a donation stream, like a, a big like subathon or um, like a St. Jude charity stream, never start your donation at zero dollars. Always put it at five, ten, twenty five dollars because it looks like people have already donated to the cause, which will make other people think they should do it, too. It's a mentality thing. Um, yeah. So if it's just, if it's at zero and no one's donating it to new people, it's like, oh, well, he's been live for seven hours. No one's donated money. Maybe I shouldn't donate either because the content's not good. But if they see a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, they're like, oh, OK, people are donating. Like, maybe I should do. I should also do that because, you know, obviously something happened in the stream that was cool. Um, so goals like that are what motivate me um, and just being with people like my regulars every single day. The ones that do come in um, are always awesome. And the people that come back over years, I I've had people. It's been a weird week for me, man. Um, I've had people come back into my stream that I haven't seen in probably since my old account. And they're like, hey, just found you again. What's up? I'm like, I haven't I haven't seen you since you were in like middle school, bro. You're in, you're done with college now. My mod, my very first mod I ever had, he was 12 when I made a mod. He's now graduated from college and has a girlfriend. It's so Let that sink in. Weird. <laughs> like, it's so weird. It's I've like, like I've literally watched some of my viewers grow up. Yeah. It's nuts. I have okay, so I have Amethyst in my chat. And he's mm -hmm. been around. And when same thing, when he was first in here, he had like a different account and everything. And I've literally seen him go through middle school, high school. I've seen all the shit that's gone mm -hmm. on in his life. And I'm like, I feel like your family. <laughs> Like, right. I know Instagram's more. Instagram's a hell of a thing, man. I'll go look up some of my, my, uh, my viewers and like my mods and stuff. I'll look them up on Instagram and we'll connect. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then all of a sudden years go by. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, you have a kid now. You weren't even out of high school yet when I first met you. It's so wild. But like, that's the stuff that I love to see. Like, that's the stuff that keeps me going because the longer I stream, the longer I cast, the more things I get to see, the more people I connect with, the more like, weirdness ha i've been invited to people's weddings i don't even know i have never met some people i've been invited to their wedding i'm like oh that's cool <laughs> like, <laughs> dude that's, that's wild it is but yeah that's that's some of the motivation stuff it's like little little tiny goals always have like a dream goal because i you could always achieve your dream um if you put your mind to it that's why i've always told myself so that's why i always say make a million dollars today will i do it who knows? But it's a possibility. There's a possibility that Mr. B sees my video on, on Twitter for some reason and goes in and goes, hmm, here's 10 grand. Like, huh, thanks. You know, like you never know. And you should never you should never stop yourself from having those thoughts because once you do, you're limiting yourself to what you can what you can do. But yeah. when you set the bar so freaking high, you have no limit. So that makes um, sense. yeah, that's my that's my motivation. That's what I think about every single day. That's so, good. That's good. Just, yeah. Um my phone i just turned off okay what the fuck oh no it just locked itself never mind <laughs> i'm a professional i swear um so kind of going on to that so obviously you motivate yourself a lot with having mm -hmm. that goal the big goal and then being appreciative of the small things but who would who would you say besides yourself is your biggest supporter my biggest supporter uh my family 100 hands down my family uh my mom and my dad are some of the most supportive people of my content creation have always been supportive of my content creation um you know, so it's funny because when i i know there's a question later on that i guess we'll just cover now um one of the questions that you had sent me was um you know what would you do if there wasn't if you weren't content creating or creating content i think was one of the things that was on there um yeah. before i ever set foot into a studio to do any video work or anything like that i've always wanted to work in the science field and be an epidemiologist for something like this pandemics i wanted to learn about viruses and how to track them and what r knots are and um you know all these things but then uh which is why my name's admired plague my name's admired plague because that's derived from what i wanted to do before i got into content creation um, so it's kind of like a little ode to myself. Like if this ever happens, if I if I can't make it, this is what I want to do. Um, but um, uh, 
so my parents have always been supportive of what I did though. So when I first got YouTube, like they bought me my first capture card. They're the ones that let me set up everything for the VCR capturing because I had no freaking clue what I was doing at 12 years old. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing. And, um, you know, like my dad got me Photoshop for the first time ever and helped me like learn how to do Photoshop. And, um, and they bought me my first video camera and all this stuff. And then when I stream, uh, I, my dad streams with me like he he's an affiliate. My dad's an affiliate on Twitch. He plays games with me almost every night. We were playing Valorant last night together. Um, my mom pops in every so often and donates to my charity streams because she thinks what I do for charity is an amazing thing and she supports it wholeheartedly. And she supports my dream of you know being a full time content creator for the rest of my life. If I could do it. Um, they've always believed in, in me and what I do. So to me, uh, you know, they're they're my biggest supporters and always will be. And uh, I'm very grateful to have parents that, you know, accept me for what I do because there are so many content creators that don't have that support system. And it's so sad to see that, like, people are like, oh, you can't make money. You can't make money playing video games. You can't make money doing content. It's like, we're not just content creators. We're not just playing video games. We're entertainers. Yeah. If you look at your TV and you're looking at actors on Law & Order or 90 Minute Bachelor or whatever, it's for 90 Day Fiance, um, Cake Wars, like, we're no different than them. We run a show. Yeah. Like we're our own production managers running a show that has commercial breaks, that has content that's fed in and we're on daily. Like we are no different. We're just doing it from home rather than in a big studio. So, um, and it's, it's sad to see, you know, when content creators don't have that support because I think that wears down on them mentally because then their parents or their family start to um, degrade what they're doing. And it, it shows in their content when they start to kind of like lose that grip of I'm doing really good now things are slipping and now no one's by my side i my parents have been there from my days with thousands of viewers they've been there for days with i had zero viewers um regardless um so it's they're they're my definitely my biggest supporters and what what would you say to somebody who's has the opposite of what you have right someone who doesn't have that support system like you were talking about what would you tell them to keep um, them going? fuck the haters <laughs> i mean so, so like it's <laughs> It's so easy to say that, but like, I mean, I, I have days where I feel like I've done nothing. Um, so for instance, uh, we just ran a St. Jude stream um, Saturday, last Saturday, ran a 24 hour stream. One of my lowest viewed 24 hour streams I have ever ran in 10 years. One of my lowest donation uh, goals ever in my 10 years. Uh, so, you know, when I when I see that and I'm looking at it, I beat myself up because it's like I could have marketed more. I could have done. I could ask more people for help. I could have reached out to more family and friends to come view the stream or more retweets. Like there's always that I could have done more. It doesn't matter if you're a small content creator or a large content creator. There's always that feeling of I could have done more to make this better. And uh, you have to realize that you just pushing go live is better than 80% of content creators that stop because they didn't have viewers. There are so many content creators that stream for a week, got no viewers and stopped. If you're hitting that go live button, you're already better than those 80% of people that stopped. If you don't want to stop, find a friend that you can just game with. Doesn't matter if, um, you know, they're not in your stream. Just someone to talk to while you're playing makes you feel better. I know that playing a video game by myself with no one watching and playing alone makes me feel so isolated that it's so hard to keep a stream going. Um, so that's why they're hell, I'll even load my own stream up on my phone. So it, even if I do have a viewer account, which I normally don't, it still says at least one or two. Yeah. And that keeps me going because now I feel like I have an audience of two people. Because if you look at it, um, there's so many examples of viewership numbers and what they relate to. So it's like, okay, if you have three people in your room watching you, you have a study group. If you have 10, you know, you have like a small room of people. If you got 20, you have a whole classroom. If you have 1,000, you have an auditorium. And they kind of like put these numbers into perspective because when you look at streamers that have 16, 20, 25,000 viewers, it's so hard to visualize what 5, 10, 15 look like. But in reality, when you're in a room of 15 people, to a lot of people that are like uh, um, introverts, that's all the fucking people, you know? <laughs> so uh, you, gotta, you gotta just keep it in perspective like that. So if you don't have support of your family, one, doesn't matter what they say, it's what you wanna do. Um, I chose this path, I chose this career, I wanna do this career for myself. They need to realize that and you can't let someone else tear you down for that, no matter what they say. I don't care if your your mom or your dad are telling you that con your content sucks, someone will find your content enjoyable. I don't like watching League of Legends streamers. I think it's dumb because no one of them talk. They just sit there and play and all you hear is clickety clackety clickety clackety. <laughs> Yet they have 10,000 viewers. 
So uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's no different. Just because your your family doesn't support your content doesn't mean someone does not like someone out there will so, like like they do like your content, you know. So there's some there's always something that someone's gonna enjoy that others don't enjoy. And it's so hard to figure that out when you first start because you don't have a community yet that you if you have to figure out what they enjoy. So and then you got to kind of mesh what you like and what they like together. That's why I have Dead by Daylight. It's right. a horror game. I really enjoy the game. I got thousands of hours in the game. People like watch me play it because I can be entertaining, also informative. And I just kind of found that niche. It took me eight years to find that niche. So Man, I, it's um, there. Someone will find it. Keep because, going. Keep pushing. Go live. No, yeah, for real. And the biggest thing, too, is like you'll I, I say this a lot to myself because I have gone on, I think, about five different breaks now. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And I think the hardest thing for me uh, personally is looking back at where I was and seeing the mistakes I made that killed oh, my, my channel. And oh, it hurt so bad. But I, I, my girl is really, really supportive. And every day we just say, okay, it doesn't matter. That was back then. Mm -hmm. It was a different world. Mm -hmm. Today you're rebuilding and you're bu building a better community. And that's that's one thing I want people right. to realize. Is like, especially even if like you know when you back in the day you had everything you were on your way you know to becoming a partner or you're on your way to becoming full-time and then something happened and it destroyed everything don't dwell on that you know think about it just keep uh, moving i still do i mean yeah we all we all <laughs> still do it keeps me up at night um but we all still dwell on it but at the end of the day it's like well you're gonna regret more not trying again mm -hmm. than yep. just letting that kill you i uh, so i use that regret as a as a fuel to, to fuel the fire to keep going because um so i've taken numerous breaks and uh, one of the hardest things as you said is coming back from a break especially for me when i was at my peak i took a break at my peak the dumbest thing i've ever done in my entire life um i don't know why i did it why i thought i would i would why i wanted to do it it was dumb i don't have many regrets in my life and that's probably the only one was stopping when i was like on fire like i should have just kept going and um I've taken breaks like on summers to be outside with friends. Uh, that's when I realized, oh, if I want to make this a thing. I have to make sacrifices. So I sacrifice, you know, evenings at bonfires with friends. But then I make time to hang out with them individually. So there's kind of like workarounds for everything you do. Uh, my biggest regret, though, and my biggest stopping point on Twitch was just a couple of years ago. I got partnered the same day I accepted a job. So I went from full time to then having a job. That job put me in a time slot to where I couldn't stream when I was streaming. So I lost my entire crowd, all of my viewers, all 230 that I had to keep for two months to get partnership were gone because they were all morning time slots. And then I was streaming late at night and I lost everybody. I went from 230 average for two months straight down to like 10. And working a lot wore me down mentally to where I didn't want to come home and stream anymore because I just wanted to relax and talk to you know friends, family, girlfriend, whatever at the time. And had I kept going as a partner and not stopped once I had that momentum, I could be so I feel I could be so much more farther along than where I am now. Yeah. But uh, as we said, you got to keep going, though. You got to I use this as my fuel now. I'm rebuilding my community back up. I finally back to full time streaming again. People are coming back. They're slowly realizing I'm on every single day besides Fridays and they're enjoying the content again. So I'm slowly rebuilding back that momentum. And this time when I hit that momentum, I'm not fucking stopping. <laughs> so same, same dude. Oh, like, and even another thing too, is like some people will be like, oh, I'm not even breaking this one thing. But if you, if you look at your stats, like this is something I started doing on YouTube is where every, at the end of every month, I'll look at my stats and see how I'm doing mm -hmm. and then make a plan for the next month. When I mm -hmm. came back and I moved up to San Antonio, Texas, and I I had everything set up. I had a because when we were living in the valley, it was me and my girl in her small childhood bedroom. There wasn't a lot of space mm -hmm. to stream. Um, I was working construction. I'm still working construction. So that was mentally wearing on me. So I, I just I just didn't stream like I was trying to keep active mm -hmm. online, but I was just like, nah, I can't do this. I came back and I started off with zero to one, zero to two people a stream. I was like, fuck, okay, just kept going, kept going. Over the course of two months, I've tripled those numbers. Now, it might not seem like a lot. Oh, yeah. But that's, that's, it's that's a lot of percent if you look at it. Yeah, yeah exactly. At, it's it's look, 200% more. Like, yeah, it's a it, like, big number. Last night's stream, we t we capped out at nine at nine viewers. And 
you know, granted my chat wasn't blowing up, but I didn't care because I had a couple people in chat and I had a couple of people I was playing mm -hmm. with and it was a lot of fun. But still in my head, I was like, okay, cool. I haven't hit nine viewers in a long time. That is means something. Like at least people are clicking yep. on the stream. So keep that in mind when, to the viewers, keep that in mind uh, when you're looking at maybe smaller numbers, as long as you're consistent and you can look at the growth, even if it's a tiny little bit, that is so much more than, like you said, 80% of people. So don't fucking give up. <laughs> right. We're trying to drive home. Um, okay, so this is also kind of dives into the next question. Is, is it as rewarding as you thought it would be when he first started and he started going full time and he thought about what could happen? Did you see yourself where you're at right now? Or is it as rewarding as you thought it would be? Is it more rewarding because of the people that you've made connections with? Or is it less rewarding because it's not Honestly, so funny or whatever? <laughs> I... I will go ahead and say that in never in my entire life would I ever imagine getting to do the things that I've gotten to do if I didn't start streaming. I'm not going to say partnership did anything because most of the cool things I've ever done were before I was a partner, before I was an affiliate. I've streamed on some of the biggest stages I've ever seen in my life at some of the coolest venues. I have met some of the, the coolest people in my career. I've met actresses. I've met actors. I've met uh, video production executives. I've met voice actors. I met all these really cool people and done all these really cool things for different organizations and different companies and um, all these different things. And I, looking back at 12 year old me starting up a YouTube channel, would never have ever guessed I'd be able to do those kinds of things um, ever. But now it's like I look back and go, holy shit, I did what? Like I did these things like it still baffles me to this day when someone comes to my stream and go, hey, I saw you on the Alienware stage playing Dead by Daylight. Like you were front and center. Like, yeah, I, I forgot I did that. Like, holy shit. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I was I was on a huge ass stage at TwitchCon in front of a whole live audience and a blowing up chat while I'm juking killers on Dead by Daylight by myself on this big ass stage for Alienware. And then, you know, they then they sent me a huge care package for Christmas. They sent me every single one of their top end peripherals that that Christmas. And I'll never forget it. And um, you know, it's just wild. Like I never thought 12 year old me would never assume that I'd be on a giant stage like that. I always thought that the biggest stage I'd be on would be like Columbus MLG stage for Halo or Gears, because that's where I used to hang out at, because that's where I started my gaming career was pretty much right. in Halo. Um, well, pr in the esports scene, at least was uh, Halo 2 doubles. And um, I thought that's that I thought I peaked there. I thought that's where I peaked. <laughs> <laughs> like going to going to the arena in Columbus for MLG and playing on a, a small ass computer in a system in a room full of a bunch of hot, sweaty nerds. Like that's where I thought I peaked. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's so been it's been a way more rewarding. It has been way more rewarding than I ever could have uh, imagined. And uh, these are opportunities that are out there for everybody, not just partners. Like, like I said, most of the stuff I did, I was an affiliate or before affiliates were even a thing. So. Um, how did, how did you get stop. that? So that's really curious to me because the mentality that I see a lot with, you know, people who aren't too into the scene is that you have to have the numbers before you get invited to events. But how did you manage nah. to get yourself there? Like, what, what was, I mean, I don't want to say the secret, but like, I'm assuming it's more of a marketing so, strategy. Um, so when it comes to marketing, you, you have to not be afraid of the word no. I mean, that's the biggest thing that that's in life in general. Never be afraid of the word no, because if you're afraid to ask, you'll never know. You'll never you'll never get the opportunity to know if you could have done it or not if you don't ask. And for me, I sign up for everything, man. The moment I'm on Twitter, I literally have an entire Twitter list of just PR and marketing people that work for different game companies and different companies that work in gaming. And the moment I just every day I scroll through it really quick. It's like, oh, job opportunity, apply. Um, streaming opportunity for front page, apply. Charity opportunity to do a thing for this, apply. Um, re hardware review, game review, apply, apply. Like I apply for literally everything I see. And that's how I got the Alienware stage thing. I saw it, they're like, we're looking for content creators, um, you know, for our stage, you know, put down the content you like, the things you play, whatever, I applied. Someone missed their time slot and they needed someone to fill in. They called me. I'm at TwitchCon and I'm getting a call from Texas from Alienware. And I'm like, what? Huh? This is a joke. I answer it and they're like, hi, I'm so-and-so with Alienware uh, Marketing Group. Uh, we're running the booth at TwitchCon. We were we were wondering if you were still interested in a time slot for X day uh, for Dead by Daylight. I'm like, Yup. <laughs> They're like, okay, we'll fill you in. And that's how, and I just met the person the next day and they set everything up for me and told me how it was going to work because I applied because I wasn't afraid of the rejection of no. Um, you can't be afraid of that because like I said, you're going to end up just 
pigeonholing yourself into things that you don't want to do or you never get the opportunity to do anything because you're not putting yourself out there so when it comes to things you see on twitter or social media facebook instagram whatever if something says like apply here link for x apply do the thing doesn't matter if you like it or well i i will stop you if you don't like it probably don't apply because if it's like a paid sponsor deal for a game you don't like it's gonna be kind of hard to sell yeah a game you're not enjoying like i always kind of stick to certain things that's why i follow certain like mailing lists because i know what's coming through i know it's going to be a horror game i know it's going to be a shooter or an arena uh, arena shooter or it's going to be a survival crafting game almost every email i get is like those three things so i know if i'm getting an email it's probably related to that apply apply <laughs> um apply this is the the title of the episode is apply <laughs> i'm gonna make that the title because just, just apply. because it, seriously no i mean like that's how i've literally gotten everything to do in my life i have met so or i i have okay so i have met norman reedus from the walking dead before that was pandorum um i met him because i literally emailed his manager and said hey i'm running a podcast on uh you know for video games and he's the voice actor for daryl dixon and the new you know walking dead game that's coming out can he be on our show yes holy shit and then i got to meet him at columbus comic-con when i was down there and we hung out like he invited me to a birthday for sean patrick flannery for the boondock saints and i'm like this is cool <laughs> um <laughs> michelle hutchinson the voice of um mel from uh the walking dead uh, telltale series uh, same thing. I just emailed her and said, hey, I love the series. I'd love to have you on the show. Sure, I'll be on when you're free. Oh my God, no way. Uh, uh, Georgia Van Kylenberg, she is the voice of Vanille. Same thing. I just emailed her and said, hey, I would love to have you on our show. Um, you know, is that totally, is that fine? Turns out she's the, uh, she was the CM community manager for Starbury Studios, which did not only Dead by Daylight, but also Payday. So now I'm talking to this voice actor, but now I have this in with a company in the video game world. <laughs> Like, because it, I just asked and I wasn't afraid of a no. I can't tell you how many emails I got that just say no. Like, so many, but it never discouraged me from sending another email to someone else, you know? So, yeah, up, up, up. yeah I, I think I broke that, that, that scare. Um, I actually DM'd you about this, but I don't think you saw it. Uh, cause it was really quick, but uh, there's a lot of DMs, man. Yeah, I, I was going to say like, no, no, it, it's cool. Like I figured I was like, all right. You know he's he's busy but um i i applied to be on the omen squad for omen pcs mm -hmm. and i had never done anything like this i was fucking scared out of my mind because i'm like i don't belong with these people like that that was my mentality at the time it's like i don't belong with these people i'm some just random ass you know kid well not kid but like that that was my mentality i'm some random ass kid nobody why would they you know even consider me but then i was like fuck it why not send it full send mm -hmm. so full I send full send and that's, that's how i do everything now is full send i, I no longer care yeah <laughs> just, just just send it because it turned out pretty, to be pretty good like they haven't announced yet so i'm still having low-key anxiety like uh will it happen but mm -hmm. i met okay so basically my my girl she worked in the banking industry with vendor management so she knows how to make those kind of emails and make those kind of applications sound good because like when i wrote it out i was blabbering and my anxiety was just like hey throw all this information in there and try to make yourself sound good and my girl like helped me we toned it back we made it sound really good and really helped me drive down the points was because like one of the questions was like what can omen do for your community i was like um stuff <laughs> you know i, well, I didn't you see know. well you see the follow-up question you apply but you never expect the follow-up question you expect to no. know and you're like oh hmm, what mm. do i do from here I <laughs> what bullshit can i type up to make me sound real good <laughs> yo dude for real and i was just like i don't know what to tell you because like yeah community giveaways providing good content you know that was my main thing I was like okay if i get an omen i get a pc from omen so i can make amazing content you know, just cause, cause like, that's my biggest thing is quality and I don't have the material for it. So I'm like, fuck. So that, that's what went through my head. But then like, also it was like a thing about being in the community, like helping the, our community grow, helping create a good space. So she, we did all this together. And then I started doing my research. I started looking up mm -hmm. the other Omen members and turns out one of them lives in San Antonio, like 20 minutes away from me. <laughs> the things you learn. Dude, for real, it was crazy. And I was like, huh? So I jumped in his chat and we hit it up and, you know, we've been talking and I was just like, 
Well, even if they say no, I still know somebody here in San Antonio that I can hang out with or play games yeah. with. It's like I still know somebody. So that's that's a big thing too. I, I I think just keep applying, and I need to apply for more stuff. I just I don't know. I, I still get that anxiety. Like I need to do more. And now talking to you, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Well, it's not not only just like applying, like the other thing is just being active on social too, because like I know pretty much if you name a company, I probably know someone at the company that can help someone find something. Um, I, I like so I run a stream team for Infectious. It's my stream team. It's a bunch of partners and then some other people um, that, are, that are growing and are close to partner. And um, I still have partners reach out to me and say, hey, Plague, you know, do you have someone at Tripwire for Maneater? Do you know someone at Square Enix for Final Fantasy 7? Do you know someone at Elgato? for um you know whatever and i'm like yep 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 here's the information here's the information here's the information um but i don't like i i won't email them for them i'm like here you go here's the contact email like i still have them sent through the proper channels um if i know the person very well like if i know if i know the content creator super 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 well and they don't just use me for a contact um i will personally introduce them to someone say okay now the floor is yours like i've now made the introduction talk like now it's up to you yeah. Um, so it kind of depends on like what level. Um, but that's one of the nice things is like, for instance, you know, someone that works with Omen. So if they say no now, you improve your content a bit. You can go to the person that you know that works with Omen and say, hey, do you have a contact at Omen that I can talk to about the product, you know, about this opportunity instead of just email? Um, that way you're actually getting a face rather than just an info at or a support at or contact at or whatever. You're yeah. actually getting a person that you can recognize and, you know, and put a face to a you know, email address. Um, exactly. That's one of the biggest things about you know not worrying about saying no is talking to people. Like there, I can't tell you how many people I go to on Twitter and say, "Hey, I'm a I'm a, I'm a you know a content creator on Twitch. I'm interested in X. You know, can you DM me? Because their DMs are usually closed. And like, I right, bet there you go. And they throw me a DM. I'm like, okay, I want you know I'm looking for blah 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 blah. Here's what I'll do. Like I have a whole pitch and I throw it out. And they're like, yes or no. But hey, I now have a contact. I now know someone that works there. And that way, if something else comes up that fits what I'm doing or fits my channel, they can, you know, give me that opportunity. Um, so it all kind of falls in together of just full send. Yeah, full send. And just but not being be respectful, of though, when you full send. Yeah, oh, never be demanding. No, oh, never. I, I cannot tell you how many emails I see from my CM friends that are like, I have 10,000 viewers, so I deserve this game. No, no, you don't. If you are a majority like a tabletop streamer and you play tabletop simulator or Monopoly or I don't give a shit and you're looking for Doom Eternal, that doesn't fit your content that you normally put out. So their money spent paying you to put this game on your channel will not have as good of a return as putting this on someone's channel that says play. I don't know. Uh anything else that involves a gun in first person aspect they'll sell, they'll probably sell more copies than the person with 10,000 viewers exactly. i can tell you that one of one of the partnerships that i ended up getting uh, i got because even as a smaller streamer at the time this before i got partner uh one of the one of the things i was selling was uh, an xcom 2 uh deal um i was chosen because it fit my content and i ended up selling more copies of xcom 2 in my stream than their biggest caster did so they offered me <laughs> They offered me uh, a partnership slot with the company because I did work for them and I did it well. And I've been a partner with this company ever since. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's like if you if you have good content, you believe in yourself and the content matches what you're trying to sell or what you're trying to accomplish, you're going to do way better than someone that's going out of left field and trying something new. That's like saying um, someone trying to play. uh, I don't know. um, Let's go with. Let's see. Barbie uh, Equine Adventures or Barbie Island Adventures. I don't care. And then like Raid Shadow Legends comes to you and says, hey, want to sponsor this stream and play Raid Shadow Legends? I guarantee you none of your viewers are going to play Raid Shadow Legends or a very small percent might or they already have it downloaded because it's so saturated right now. I only brought it up because I've seen tons of streamers doing Raid Shadow Legends content. And I've been making jokes about that like all day and I, I all week. <laughs> I tried it once and I'm like, this is a good game. It's just not for me. Um, and but that's why, <laughs> but it just circles back to the point of, you know, apply for everything, but make sure it's for your content, because once you start going left field, people will call you sellout. Uh, you're not doing it for the right reason. Um, you want to, the 
if you genuinely enjoy what you're playing and you're trying to sell, for instance, like I'm partnered with Gamersubs, I'm partnered with Technosport. I use their products and have bought them before I got partnership with them because I stand by the product. Mm -hmm. It's easier to sell when you can genuinely say, I enjoy these products or I enjoy this game to the full extent that I will put the admired plague brand and seal of approval on this for you to purchase and spend $30 or whatever it is for a game. Like that means so much more to viewers genuinely than playing something out of left field and trying to sell it and pitch it to your community just because they're paying you a paycheck to say, play Rage Shadow Legends. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah. Can anyone be good at content creation in general? Not just streaming, but also YouTube, influence no. on social media, not anybody. No. No, not everyone. It's not, it's not for everyone. Um, I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but it's un unfortunate. So, um, you know, I ran a, a guild of streamers. Um, I got se over 75 people affiliated on Twitch. I got a couple people partnered on Twitch and I had a lot of like workshops and talk people one on one and kind of help them find out where they belong in the streaming space. But not everyone is cut out to be a streamer. Not everyone's cut out to be an influencer. And here's why. Not everybody has on screen presence or on mic presence. It's just facts. Like you can't just take anybody and throw them on a pedestal and say, give me a five minute speech. They're going to freak out. They're going to they're going to have a panic attack, anxiety attack, fall on the ground and and roll off the stage because not everyone <laughs> meant to do this. Sorry, I just pictured that in my head. Because <laughs> well, that well, I mean, that's what happens. Yeah. And it's like you have to understand that, like, not everybody is cut out to speak eloquently. Not everyone is cut out to speak from the heart, but also be truthful and get it out the way they need to say it. Not everybody is a comedian. Not everyone's gonna improv. Are there certain aspects of streaming that you don't need to be a personality for? Yeah, like I said, let's go back to League of Legends casters. They're good at the game. So people watch them for the technicality of the game. They watch them to see how they play and perform in the game. So mm -hmm. yes, if you're super freaking good at video games, super good at video games, yes, you can be a streamer, but you better be top 100 on whatever game you're trying to stream if that's the route you need to go other than that you better be fucking funny because if you're not you're not going to be cut out as a streamer you need to have good content you have to do very well with, you got to have improv stories make people laugh make people feel comfortable you are a leader of the community and if you can't lead you probably shouldn't be streaming um i said this yesterday i full sent a tweet yesterday and one of my tweet basically said that if you are a content creator not currently using your platform speaking out against injustice and the black lives matter movement you shouldn't even be a streamer you should be you should leave the platform because that's the point of our platform that's the point of what we do is we have this public face that should be speaking out against things that are affecting our fellow content creators because that's what i use my platform for i, I will sit here and i will i will talk about the black lives matter movement uh for months beyond the protesting mm -hmm. i will keep it up because I have so many friends in the content creation space that have been oppressed and have lost um, deals and have lost opportunities because they were, uh, you know, not picked over a white person. And I think that's wrong. And seeing my friends right now fucking flourishing because of what's going on makes me so happy and so proud. And I will sit here. I'll, I'll talk on this podcast. I'll talk on my own stream, which I've already been doing. I will advocate for my friends because it's the right thing to do and i have a voice when they don't so if you are a if you are a content creator you need to make sure that you're using your platform for these types of issues and if you can't do that you also shouldn't be creating content or at least not you know being a streamer as you as you asked if you know, if everyone's cut out for it if you can't talk about these kind of topics in front of people without worrying about losing followers or losing respect from your family or friends this isn't this is you're not cut out for this that's that all kind of wraps it up yeah. you know and so, and to go. emphasize that point too, I had a conversation about this. So uh, I had like no idea about Blackout Tuesday when it happened, basically because my feed was just everything that was going on and it just kind of got lost. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I've been dealing with the possibility of might have Corona. Not sure. Had to go get tested. Um, oh, that's fun. Yeah, that, that's fun. I had to get two tests. I have to get two that's tests. Fun. They're 150 oh, bucks a piece. Lovely. And uh, I'm out of work. <laughs> those should be free, by the way. Yes! Oh my god! All the tests should be free. Anyway, that's a whole different issue, not related to streaming okay. at all. So, anyway, so I've been following the protests, I've been following it, and I even spoke about it before it really blew up. I've made a Twitter video um, just about, like, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, there's just not enough punishment. So, and as I was having a conversation with somebody, and they were saying, like, they support it, but they feel like because of their skin color, 
they can't speak out about it because it's not their issue. They don't understand enough about the issue. They, they, they got sheltered from it. They, you know, basically they like they're they privileged. Feel, they're, yeah, that's what they said. They're like, I'm privileged. But I don't know anything that's privileged. going on. So what the hell do I do? Because I don't want to speak out because I don't want to say something wrong. I don't want to, you know, mm -hmm. hurt this. So I'm just not going to say anything. I'll support it in small ways. Of, of I said, no, say that. Say exactly what you told mm -hmm. me. That you feel horrible about the fact that you're privileged, 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 and don't understand what happened. Because, like, we were talking, going back and forth, is like when I grew up, I was homeless for a majority of my life. And I saw everything, you know, all my friends, the police brutality. I mean, cause this shit's been, it hasn't changed ever. It's not gotten worse or better. 100 years, man. Exactly. It's been the same thing. It hasn't changed since the dawn of America. It hasn't changed since before that. It's the same bullshit over and over again. And it's just like corporate America being like, oh, hey, we have to look good. So we're going to fake it. Right. And that's another rant. So I was telling them, like, yeah, I understand where they're coming from because I've seen it firsthand. I've been involved in shit like that and just from my position. So say it and be part of the solution by saying, like, hey, look, there are people like me who don't know what the fuck's going on or why it's going on, mm -hmm. but want to help. That that is good. So it comes. <laughs> you 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 summed it up. Listen, um, listening is the most important part for me. Uh, if by staying silent, you've chosen a side. Um, you know there was that whole like uh, speech about like Nazis. It's like when they came for the Jews, no one spoke up. When they came for the press, no one spoke up. When they came for this, no one spoke up. But when they came for me, there was no one left to speak. That's the point. That's the point we're trying to make now. If you're not a people of color and you are not speaking up you are choosing a side automatically by not saying anything. If you are afraid that you're going to say something wrong, say what you need to say as genuinely as possible and then listen. Listen to what they are telling you and adjust, learn, grow from that. Um, I didn't know about Blackout Tuesday until Tuesday. I woke up and saw everyone was, you know, has a fucking black square and then they're using the wrong hashtag for it, pushing down all the resources. Immediately, I went straight down to my stream and I turned it on a black screen that just says I can't breathe with shallow breathing with a tiltify campaign for the bailout project the bail project and I had that up for 10 hours I did not stream I did not do any content creation I sat in just chatting with that one scene up for 10 hours I had more people in that one stream than I did during my 24 at some points wow just that's sitting there awesome. having a conversation and people were donating to the charity um because and then someone was like on I, I had posted on Facebook about it just to kind of get more awareness and someone's like um a, a black man was like, hey, can we get more of these? Can you organize this? I said, it's not my place to lead. It's your guys' time to shine. I'm just here to listen and do my part because it's not about me. Um, it's about you guys and standing up for what you guys deserve because you guys have been oppressed for so fucking long that it's time. You guys, you guys should be at the forefront. I did nothing but repost all of my people of color, uh, friends, content creators stuff all day long because nothing should have been about me at all. Even my tweet did not have a link to my stream. Just that I was live because it's not about me. It's about a message mm -hmm. and it worked. Um, and it got people talking about it. And uh, I still I still have the scene up. I still have, uh, you know, the um, like all the resources there because it's about education and about having us grow and learn and get past this and not have history repeat itself over and over and over again. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I'm going to advocate all day long about that. And, uh, you know, if, if you have a voice, you should use it for those that can't. And that's what I've been trying to do. And not one person has yelled at me yet, but if they did, I would listen. I wouldn't yell back. I wouldn't try to defend myself. I'd be like, okay, well, what's going on? How can I make this different then? Because also Google's your best friend, guys. Don't just go ask your black friend or your Asian friend or Hispanic friend what you should be doing. Google it because they're not Google. You shouldn't have to ask them technically because they shouldn't have to answer. They don't have to answer you. Yeah. Google it. Find out what the issues are and what everyone else is doing and then help. So yeah. anyway, end rant. Flash <laughs> you know, end rant. Flash, yeah, no, I was, I've been super upset about this the whole time. And it's just like, mm, there's so much I want to say. I'm just going to do my part. And if I ever meet a white supremacist, I swear. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to get thrown oh, in jail. I'm, I'm, I'm literally... I'm I well I've I've always lived by this policy. Um, I I have big punch in every Nazi you see in the face energy, and uh, luckily I've never seen in my life I have never seen any one of my people of color friends get directly um, attacked or you know racism towards them IRL. 
if they did i i would punch someone in the face because my friends are my friends like yeah you don't fuck with my friends <laughs> so um that's that anyway let's no. move on yeah that's before i get like <laughs> angry <laughs> so what okay what would be your biggest drawback like what specific moment was your biggest drawback and then how did you overcome it oh as i said before it was when i um took a job over streaming full-time as when i get once i hit partnership uh how did i overcome it um i quit my job and got a job in the gaming industry as a director of production and then started creating content on three other partner channels and growing all those out and then still not doing content on my own channel but it introduced me to a lot more people so when i finally came back just recently all the people i've met doing that job have been coming out and helping out um it's all about how how you go about coming back it's all about how you show yourself coming back and the events leading up to coming back so if you look at a video game let's just take world of warcraft for example because they do this really well when there is a new patch coming out or like a new dlc like a new expansion coming out they always 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 update their content for some sort of invasion or some small little event that goes on that links that to the next dlc or the next expansion pack you need to be doing the same if i know i'm coming back on okay so today is the june 4th i'm coming back july 4th right what do you need to do to come back every fucking week twice three times a week you need to be dropping teasers you need to be dropping graphics you need to be dropping something that gets people excited because it means something's about to happen it's the same thing that wow does it's like oh what are these pillars here or Fortnite is the same thing oh what's this ball in the sky why is it getting closer every week what's it doing and all of a sudden boof event happens and it's like everyone's there for it people watch the fucking 2.4 million people watch the fucking black hole on twitch for a day <laughs> a black hole that's the kind of shit you need to do when you're coming back streaming if you like take a break for however long you take a break for when you come back you gotta make it a spectacle you gotta make it something crazy when i came back i had this fucking intro that blew people's minds and they're like oh my god i still use the intro to this day and because it, it was the intro that i made when i switched from my other account to this account and that intro to this day has never changed and i still get comments about it about how cool it looks and i don't think i'm ever gonna fucking change it um but you gotta make it special you can't just be like you can you just like, jump on Twitter one day. I'm back, guys. Link. <laughs> no one's in a, No one gives a shit. No one cares about that. But if you make it special, you make it like so like unidentifiable or so secret, not secretive, but like like redacted that people want to know. They want to know what's happening. They want to know what's about to go down because they want to see it. Make it a spectacle. And then as soon as you hit that go live button, man, you better have fucking more energy than every anime character put together when their life's on the line. You could be like spirit ball up in the air like this, and you better be harnessing every bit of hype that you can muster and put it into that one stream. Because I guarantee if you could do that, you're going to get clipped, you're going to get highlighted, you're going to get retweeted out to the masses very quickly with that. Anytime I get loud on stream or on a podcast or on anything that's live or whatever, so many more people show up because you, they, people want to see you animated. They want to see you lively. They want to see you enjoy what you're doing. And that is what separates good content creators from not good content creators from people that shouldn't be content creating. That right there. Energy. So it's all about planning. It's all about energy coming back. And that's what that's what I did. And every time I come back, it's always something big. It's a 24 hour event of like some crazy madness with some crazy goals and eating crazy things or whatever. It's energy. That's all it is. Um, I've done so many 24 hour streams where the end of my stream is the most crazy. Ooh, that's some good sauce. Dude, um, this is the end of my stream. Back, this was introduced as a as mm. a channel point goal. Uh, the end of the end of my 24 hour streams are always like the, the biggest spectacle because after 24 hours, I'm still animated. I'm still hype as ever. And people will send all their raids for the last hour. And I'm running like, ah! Like, like how long have you been streaming like 24 hours like how the fuck are you that energetic at 24 hours in I'm like I'm going for 26 hours now because you said that <laughs> because you, I'm going for 26 now not 24 we're going longer now because I, because it's all about bringing energy you don't see wrestlers come out like to their theme music just no they're like let's go like the, the fireworks are going off explosions everywhere music's all hype and it, da, da, da. like that's what people expect and that's what you should be doing as a streamer, not just when you come back, but all the time, honestly. 
Yeah. And uh, but like when you're coming back, that's when it's the most important. You need to leave a little trail of breadcrumbs that lead to this big, crazy, fun thing. And that is how you make an entrance. That's that's it. That's one way to overcome it. <laughs> love it. I love it. And dude, that's one thing I think I've been working on. And and every time I talk to like some of my other friends who are trying to, I was like, the biggest thing is keeping up the energy. And they're like, but how do you do it? And I'm just like, it's hard. It's hard, but you you learn it. That's one thing I'm relearning is is learning to keep up an energy. And just think about it. If you were watching your own stream, would you be hyped? Yes. I listen right, to myself talk all the time. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. I can't watch my own videos. I'm not going to See, lie. it's actually funny. So many people hate their own voice. And uh, I ha so I, I come from a broadcasting background. I can't stream. I can't do anything live unless I can hear myself talking to my own headphones. Like right now, I hear myself reverberating my headphones. I monitor 100% of the time. I am monitored because if I do something like this, hey guys, what's up? How you doing? I want to make sure that I can hear that to see what it sounds like, make sure it's good. Um, and but it's like one of the things like when you're working with radio, because I did a lot of radio stuff when I was younger. Um, you don't know what you sound like on the way on the airwaves. You don't know what you sound like at all. You have to monitor yourself. And so I, I'm sitting here 24 hours sometimes for streams. and I just hear myself talk all day. And you know what? Music to my ears because I enjoy what I say. Um, it's idea. confidence. But like I can I can go back like I a lot of people clip their streams. A lot of people go back and like well, the clip, you know, they have like a stream deck or whatever and they'll hit the little clip button. It makes it easy for them, right? I will go back and watch my entire stream front to back and go, okay, what I miss? And you know what? I keep it on because I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like watching my own content as if I'm not me because I can separate myself from that and not feel cringy. Now, when I first started, oh my God, I was like, oh shit, I sound terrible. I look terrible. What was I thinking? Oh, I think I picked my nose right there. Good job. What the hell are you doing? Um, and then like seeing, seeing where I started from now, like I started... When I was super young before I moved out of my parents' house. I was in my bedroom. My monitor was my TV with a small laptop underneath it. Um, I was still using like razor, like super cheap razor headphones with my microphone. That was my microphone. And then going from there and then seeing the evolution of all my stream setups has just been like revolutionizing. It's like, oh wow, like even my older streams, I was like, mm, I, I could be a lot better. And then I look at my new streams like, oh yeah, much fucking better, but can still be better. Yeah. there's always the mentality of i could do better um and that's what people need to keep up but they they need to like not put themselves down so much i understand we're creators i understand that like we want to perfect our craft but you're no one no one's perfect there's always room for improvement there's always room to grow um i would never ever look at a stream i did and went wow it was a perfect stream never never i had a job as a video production director and i produced tournaments for thousands of people that watch every week and I never once went, wow, that was a perfect production. It shouldn't be. It should never be a perfect, a perfect production. No, because you can Ever. always... You, you can just, always improve it. And that's the thing, too, because as long as you're always improving, you're changing things up. Mm -hmm. And it makes it more entertaining because, like, my favorite people to watch are people that change things up over time. Like, they have different mm -hmm. graphics or they have different content. And, like, it, it evolves over time. And that's that mentality of... I can be better like okay to put it in perspective for the viewers i stream in 720p 30 frames why because i have to because of my my limitations but i try to crunch in as much as i can before my laptop blows up and then i'll keep changing and updating things so like literally i sourced so many parts for that pc that i'm building just so that way i can stream in 1080 60 so that way i can record clip and do all this other stuff and put out more content mm -hmm. and then also it's like I want so much more there to be. I want better audio quality. I want I want to buy an eight hundred dollar camera just so I can have a better webcam. I want the that, viewer. That's a myth. That's a myth, by the way. Don't go out and buy an eight hundred dollar webcam. This mm. thing right here, pretty freaking clear, right? Like it looks pretty good. I yeah. think. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. It's, it's like a six, it's a key, it's a Razer Keo. It's a Razer Keo ten eighty. How do you get uh, that thing to FPS? work? I could never get mine to work. I threw mine in the trash. What? It would what never I, work. I've had, I've had this. I've had this thing for years. I still have the box. The box is right there. It's, you can see it. My ring light's right there. Like I'm poking it. Why do I love this thing in a in a in a four by three box? I can never get it to work, and then it would always be stuck at a really low quality, and it would lag the fuck out. So I was like, "Fuck oh, this man, shit." See, you know what was fun about about the Kio and streaming when I first got it? Cause I, I have. I also have. Um. So let's see. I have the Kio there. I have a L. Uh, I have a. Da, 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 
um, the C20 there. I have a C22 on my Elgato shelf up there. So I have a whole shelf dedicated to Elgato products, but there's this <laughs> Logitech C922 right there as well. I'm actually putting that up in the ceiling for an overhead cam of my whole studio uh, when I'm done. And then um, I just bought, now I know I said don't buy an $800 camera. I just purchased a $900 vlogging camera from Sony that's coming out on the 11th because that's replacing my Kyo because I, I have gotten to the point where like I don't have much to upgrade. So at this point, it's just for fanciness, I guess. Yeah. Like I have an XLR microphone. I have a really fancy mic. I got a fancy cover for it. I got a fancy uh, um, mixer and everything. I got three fucking monitors. I, I have all my systems over here. Like I got all this stuff. There's not really much to upgrade at this point. So I'm just like, yeah, I could do more with my webcam, I guess. <laughs> like, But if you're starting out, man, my very first webcam was like some $20 off brand webcam, but it worked like yeah honestly audio first all freaking day long audio first but just mantra that audio first if you're looking at making stream upgrades audio first because most people listen while they're driving they listen while they're doing other things they listen while they're cooking uh it's it, it, taking care of their kids uh going to work uh hang out with friends whatever most of them have an audio only now you are now a podcast that has video supplement content. <laughs> audio first. Dude, right. Like, so, okay. So, speaking it, about audio, quick question on that. Um, quick tech question. Yeah. Without having to buy a $300 mix amp that's very fancy and special that I really want called Kill XLR, um, how can you make a USB mic sound good? Like, do you uh, need actually, to get a my <laughs> so uh so i have a go xlr and my very first mic in the go xlr was a usb mic i had the blue yeti um the blue yeti pro the black one um i put it in sounded great i mean it sounded not as good as this because the microphone quality of this is better um i had to go get a a, a, a ground loop recorder to make sure that there was no because you get that a lot with uh, usb mics but man like a five dollar little piece to put in there to stop the loop and uh putting through the go xlr it was crispy man it was crispy i only got this because this bad boy was on sale on black friday or something i forgot this is the at 2035 um it's glorious i love this thing but i got it on sale for like 200 but then i was like oh, i got it because i have the go xlr so i was like well now i have the option for an xlr microphone so i might as well make the most out of it hmm. but the yeti was just as good i mean obviously you're gonna get just because the microphone itself is lower quality you're gonna get lower quality sound but i mean you can tweak it with the eq settings you could tweak it with sleep stream labs you could tweak it with the go xlr system you can make it sound professional i mean i i know a lot of youtubers that use the the yetis still for their podcasts and their vods and stuff like it's a good microphone even if it's my even though it's usb it still works so go forth buy the go xlr and stick your usb microphone in it because it'll still sound good i'm gonna have to i have to eventually upgrade the razor usb mic and i actually like it because it's oh, the siren the siren i know a lot of people bag on it but i've liked it because i don't have to have it right next to my face for it to pick up things and i have a little new button that's literally probably the only reason i got it because <laughs> i can have a i refuse button. to use it i refuse to use this microphone until i got like this uh here this is the um like Oh, that's gonna sound bad. I have like the curved um, screen protector on it or mm -hmm. the wind protector on it because I refuse to get the mic condom, the, the, you know, the big bulgy black mm -hmm. um, windscreen because uh, this just looked nicer. It appealed, like, even though most, most people don't see my, my microphone because I'm not like, hey guys, I'm in my play. Welcome to the stream today. How's everyone doing today? Oh my God. I'll look at you cuties in chat. Um, I don't have it up like this. I keep it down out of the way, but it's more for me. But yeah. in case my microphone is ever up, it looks nice. I also have a lot of people that come through the house and they're like, can I see your studio? I'm like, okay. I mean, it's in the basement. There's nothing special about it. I, I built some $35 shelves behind me, put some stuff up there and put some lights everywhere, but that's about it. <laughs> you also got to be able to but just yeah, sit down um, at your setup and feel happy about it. Like, you don't... Dude, I'll, I'll, so we, we talked about depression a lot and uh, streaming mentality and things like that. I actually didn't stream for a while because I was very unhappy with my studio. Uh, there was a lot of things I wanted to do with my studio, a lot of things that I had envisioned for my studio and I wasn't doing them. And then... Um, Thankfully, I, this is going to sound really bad, I guess, but thanks to COVID-19 and the whole like unemployment checks and, and the, the stimulus checks and things like that, like I wasn't in a really, I wasn't in a bad spot before that all happened. Um, so to me, it was like upgrade money. I was like, all right, let's go. So mm -hmm. I used almost all, I didn't use all of my money. I, excuse me, Red Bull. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm much more money conscious now than I used to be. Uh, I save a lot of my money. Um, so like when I got the stimulus check, all right, we got that what a month and a half ago a month ago i don't even know anymore i got that 
never touched it until I bought the Sony camera that I'm getting that's on pre-order now. That's the first time I touched that, that money. Um, all my unemployment money, I paid my bills and I don't do anything else with it. I bought a few video games, but it all went to stream upgrades. Once I got my studio the way I wanted to, and I, I told you before that we started that I have more stuff to do because I'm actually getting rid of the sides here. Um, so when I have like a big webcam frame like this, because on stream, I can obviously get rid of it. I crop it here. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when i'm doing things like this you guys still see all this so i actually have a way to wrap everything so all you see is what i want you to see no matter what where my webcam's at so i could use it as its full 1080p 16 9 potential without having to crop anything which is gonna be nice um but like i felt so down in the dumps and didn't want to create content and didn't want to do anything because i didn't like my space the moment i got these phillips lights though and i built these shelves back here man it was game on because i was using this I got this bad boy too. Yo, hey, uh, Elgato, sponsor me. Cause you know, I got everything Elgato. Like I got the green screen, but I hated using it. <laughs> so oh. I got, I got key lights. I got uh, the, I got key lights. I got the HD 60 Pro, uh, S Pro for all my systems. I got the Elgato thingy. I got two stream decks. I have three stream decks technically. Uh, it's like, okay, cool. Now we're ready. But I didn't like the green screens. I don't like using green screens on stream. I'd rather have a cool background that can show my personality. So like, there's my first ever mascot. That's Paul. When I first started streaming, I streamed That's Half-Life. Me? I have a head crab. It's, yeah, it's Paul. That's it's me. Head crab. God damn it. It's, it's you. <laughs> um, but what I would do, like when I first started streaming, like every 100 followers I got, I'd put a new costume piece on them. And then it was always a three piece costume set. So it's like a fancy mustache, top hat and a cane taped to them. And then the next 100, it would switch. So there was always something going on with uh, my little mascot. So now that? he's back. He's back. I'm super stoked. I got all my sponsor stuff here. There's all my gamer stuff. So I got like fun stuff I like over here. So there's like Resident Evil and Portal. And like, it's nice having a space that feels like it's mine, not just a random setup in the basement, you know? Um, Another thing, like, too. I got my lights. I can change colors. Like, this is freaking yeah, baller. So, that's so cool, dude. I, <laughs> I cannot wait till I have the space to do that. Oh my God. Another thing, too. Green too. Oh, God damn it. It's so cool. The important thing about lighting, though, is making sure you look good because, like, yeah. you don't want to like drown yourself out. Because, like, no matter what color I go to, like, I still stay the same, but my background changes, which is the most important thing that you want to make sure of when you're doing lighting. But yeah, it made me feel so much better. Like, my mom's like, Oh, you're in a much better mood. You were so stressy, depressy. I'm like, Well, yeah, my studio now looks better. Like, I feel good now. Like, I actually feel like I'm ready to stream. Like, I'm just so much happier with my, with my stuff, and my content just looks better now because of it. And it makes me want to stream more. So, also, not just yeah. your, your, the studio, too, is one thing I noticed is that, like, we live in a one-bedroom apartment, and whenever we go through and we clean up everything, I feel so much more motivated. Like, when my bed's made, or our bed, I should say, when our bed's made... I was about to stand up. I was like, I shouldn't stand up. <laughs> no pants stream. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I got, I got pants. I got pants. I'm just wearing gray sweats. I don't want to get yelled at. Oh, okay. <laughs> I actually made, I made, I made that joke. I made that joke on stream today. I was like, you know, why is it wrong for guys that, you know, why is it wrong uh, for guys to go out in gray sweats? Like I, I always get in trouble or I get ogled. So everything girl going out with a no bra, like just don't look, honestly, <laughs> like, it's like your business. I want to be comfortable. If I want to go out in gray sweatpants, let me go out in gray sweatpants. Just don't make a big scene about it. Like, oh, look, we can see, like, I don't care. Dude, like, the amount of times I've matter? gone to Walmart in my pajamas with bed head and probably no underwear. Um, hey, I man. Count. I was like, I, That's I why, like, I will never, I will never, ever, ever be like, girl, you should be wearing a bra. No, man, let's set them free. I know how it, how nice it feels to not be wearing boxers sometimes. Set them free. Like, I ain't going to judge. I ain't going to make comments. Like, you do you. You be comfy. Like, exactly. my girlfriend's like, is it? It's like my girlfriend will always be like, is it OK or appropriate for me to go out without a bra on right now? Because I don't really feel like put one. I'm like, no, don't put one on. Just walk out. Like, who gives a shit? Like, what are they going to do? Why? Like, what's it matter? <laughs> hey, it's off topic. But like I, I was because like, there's I, I'm not used to seeing this cord here and I wanted to move it because this is uh, the extension cord that goes up to my Hue system because it, then there's a bunch of cords that are up there and I haven't gotten a chance to put this and wrap it on the pole over here mm -hmm. and uh i just saw it's like making me angry i'm like look at this hanging cord like cable management <laughs> oh my god dude. and i went to go stand i was like oh i'm wearing gray sweats <laughs> no it, but like going back to that it's like also just making sure you feel comfortable in your own space because when you get home yep. you want to feel like this is home you want your place space to be moderately clean exactly I you know, and I, when I get home cool. from work, I'll, the first thing I go to is I go to the bed. Uh, I mean, usually I'm covered in concrete dust, so I'll take that stuff off. Ah, um, good old drilling. concrete dust, my favorite. Dude, drilling with an SDS into a into a concrete ceiling is the worst because you're you're up there and you're drilling, and you have to look where you're drilling because you can only drill it so far. 
for you know construction reasons mm -hmm. and then all the dust and especially if it has a metal lip on it all the dust and hot metal is just flying into your face and you're like these safety mm. goggles aren't doing shit and then you get off and you're like i'm literally ghost white i'm just covered in shit <laughs> all day i'm an electrician like what <laughs> it's not what i signed up for but like i'll go to my bed I'll lay down and I'll just relax. And if my bed's not made, I can't do it. So I just, I go, I make my bed, I'll lay down, and I'll feel so much better. And then I'll go and I'll go stream. Or I'll go and I'll go record a video or I'll go and try to repair my laptop because I've repaired it about four times already. Um, rest in peace, you you will be missed, laptop. Rip. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna stick this thing on a shelf. Um, and, and that's one thing too, I tell people it's like just, Make sure your space is comfortable, clean it up. It doesn't take that long to like mm -hmm. reorganize your desk. So that way when you're sitting and you're looking at everything, you don't feel like, <clears throat> you know, you don't have that anxiety of I want to fix this, oh. or I want to fix that, you know. The, the first thing streamers should do before they hit go live, clean your desk up. That's the best, it's like, it's like the most freeing feeling. It's like, oh, I don't have cans everywhere now, cool. Grab a grab a garbage can really quick and just like take, I don't, even like three things off your desk, and just choop, just clean it up a little bit. Oh man, you're, 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 you're gonna know that your energy and your content level goes up like a notch because you just now cleared off your desk like i do it every so often like every like two or three days i'll go through i got my i got my dust spray stuff here i'm like and i clean off everything and i like rearrange all my stuff around clean it all up make sure everything's like centered and whatever, whatever like that and i'm like okay i feel better now yeah go live boom better exactly. contact <laughs> and i'll, I'll make clean up make, make it your own all the nuts and bolts and everything that was in my pockets that i set on my desk you know all of these like just I literally came home from my from from work one day and I took everything out of my pocket. So it was like nuts, toggle bolts, all these different things because we were doing building a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that day. I set it on my desk because I was like, I got to bring it back tomorrow because we're probably going to need them. Went, did a couple of things, came back and I'm like, holy shit, my desk is covered in construction pieces. Oh no. And I'm like, swipe, Rip. swipe, swipe, <laughs> just get it off because they had been accumulating over a week and I was just like, I could literally build a rack for a panel right now. I have everything I need. What? <laughs> and I wonder why we keep running out of material. <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, construction is a weird trade. I'm not going to lie. Um, if anyone's looking for a side job to do while streaming, construction apprentice jobs are pretty good. Not going to lie. Like it's, it's mentally draining and I'm switching careers on that because I just don't like it. But I've seen a lot of people do really well and it's it's just a really good program overall you go in you go to school once a week or twice a week you get paid you get benefits for being in school it's just a really good i always say if you That's can't cool. find a job that you don't know what job you want to get don't go to a call center right off the bat unless you know you like that environment go get a construction trade job there's so many things from plumber electricians to data wires there's so many different things and they all have apprenticeship programs that are great um so if like you need a side job while you're streaming that's that's one thing to consider yeah um where were we okay we are professionals don't worry okay yeah here's a good question so at what moment did you see yourself and you're like holy shit i've made it i'm gonna do this full time but like what was the defining factor of okay i made it in a sense like uh I'm honestly, I'm still not there yet. Um, I haven't really had a moment where it's like, oh my God, I made it. I've had moments where it's like, holy shit, this is awesome. I never thought I'd be here, uh, but I haven't made it. Um, I, I don't think people should have the mindset of like one activity or one thing or like one week or one month of like successfulness. They should go, I made it. Um, because once you say I've made it, you're admitting that you've peaked and that you will never go farther past that point. Um, this, this goes to back to my whole uh, spiel about goals and making a million dollars on a stream. Um, I will say I have not made it until I hit a million dollars on a stream. That's when I've made it. That's when I've hit my peak because no other day past that will be better unless you I move the goalpost. One. <laughs> right. Unless I move the goalpost, which you can do, but I don't think you should. I don't think any content creator should ever sit there to them. Look at themselves in the mirror and go, yeah, I made it. This is it. I've peaked here because from that point on, you're going to be complacent with your content. You're going to be happy with where you are. I think every content creator should be uncomfortable. I think every content creator should always have a drive to do better and to be better. And I mean, that that goes for everything. Like, um, 
you know, yeah. So you're ninja, you're playing Fortnite, you have you're on Twitch before Mixer, and you have, you know, sixty-three thousand viewers in your chat, you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, you're making brand deals and you're in TV shows. You haven't made you haven't peaked yet. Should not you should never say I've made it at that point. Because there's more to do because now all of a sudden, oh, here comes uh here comes the Rona. You lost you know whatever you may have lost your platform or oh twitch goes down mixer goes down okay now what luckily he's smart he's made more moves but like not everyone has an opportunity uh to keep going and uh if they were to lose something like this and then um you know to me it's when there's something that happens like say speaking out okay so you say you've peaked you say you've made it but then you make a terrible mistake and you do something like not speak out against injustice now you're on cancel culture now right. you went from here to here and like now you can no longer say you've ever made it you know yeah um so just in my opinion i don't think anyone should ever say they've made it i know i've never i haven't made it. i've had cool experiences if i were to pick one shining moment of what i've done i was gonna I was probably me on stage at, at, at alienware like that was freaking awesome like i still like there are still days where i'm like I look at pictures from my day. I'm like, oh my god, look how excited I look. I look like a fucking kid in a candy store. I'm up, I'm up there by myself in my esport jersey, like, <laughs> like let's go. <laughs> and like people were throwing me food. Like some people bought me. They brought me because I made a joke. I made one simple joke. All I said was, wow, this feels so different being up here because usually I'm at home eating, but now I can't because I'm using someone else's stuff. My viewers that were live that were there watching me IRL went to a food court bought me food and brought it back. I probably drank seven Red Bulls on that stage because people were just, I was like Stone Cold Steve Austin in the ring. They're just throwing me beers, not beers, but Red Bull. And they're like, here's drinks. And I have like a line, like there's, I think there's a picture and I have like a line of Red Bull just on like the stage because people just kept throwing me drinks and food. I had two unfinished hot dogs and an unfinished piece of pizza because I couldn't eat it all in my time slot. It was so much food. And like at that moment, I never in a million years thought I'd be on that stage doing that like i said you go back and ask 12 year old me where you think i'm gonna be in 5 10 15 years it's not there it's not doing that it's not eating and chugging red bull on a stage for alienware at twitchcon <laughs> like never never <laughs> thought that'd be a possibility so, so if there was one shiny moment that made me feel like i've made it that would be it but personally i i don't think i ever want to feel like i've made it because i feel like i get too complacent and i'd be too happy and my content would suffer because of it um, and I don't think I should ever feel like that. I want I always want to strive for more and do better, uh, not just for me, but for others around me too. So that's a good answer. That's a very good answer. That. Um, the P up back off of it. What would you tell somebody when, so say you were mentoring somebody mm -hmm. random. Somebody. Oh man, that's an easy question. Um, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So say you're mentoring one of your, <laughs> one of your people from, yeah. I think I was part of that one time. That's how I met you. You were. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you I was, were. I still get those emails. Um, <laughs> You're mentoring somebody and they're doing success, doing well, right? They, they're they making money and all that. At what point would you tell mm -hmm. them, okay, you can go full time. You can quit your day job. What is what is the defining factors between I should keep my day stability. job? Stability. Okay, stability. Stability. So um, what basically, stability. so stability is a huge thing because, you know, for me, it was, you know, I was just on the cusp of stability. I was paying my bills, but it was very tight. I had to sacrifice a lot of things. I couldn't eat as, as good as I wanted to eat. I had to sacrifice and, and buy like 85 cent ramen and macaroni and cheese boxes uh, because money was tight and bills come first. Um, and then stream improvements and then food. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when you're looking at it and you're going, hmm, I, I, I think I'm at a point to go full time. You have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Can you survive three months without a paycheck from Twitch at this point. Do you have enough saved up? The biggest thing people don't realize is saving up your money to continue in case you have a bad month. You need to have something to fall back on in case something bad happens. You don't get a Twitch paycheck. Um, there's a, a hit, uh, for instance, seasonal. Twitch is seasonal. Twitch always has more viewership like around the winter time because everyone's indoors. People are doing things inside. They wanna watch content. But in the summer, content uh, viewing viewership goes a little bit down. People are want to be outside. They want to be, uh, you know, in the sun. They want to be at the beach. They want to be with their friends at bonfires, not watching someone play Dead by Daylight or Raft or Seven Days to Die. Um, you know, are there tons of people around the world that are watching content? Yes, but are the numbers significantly lower in the summer? Yes, not this year specifically because of Rona. Everyone's indoors right now because of Rona. So numbers are up. But statistically, like you want to look at the seasons. If you can comfortably get through a summer 
with what you have saved up and what you make on stream, you can go full time. You want to be able to make as much as you were making before you go full time and then have some saved up too. You need to have that cushion. So I would I would preach that all day long that you need to have a savings account that can get you through, you know, two to three months uh, of not getting paid at all. Oh. Oh Blinded by the light. Sorry, I just don't want my dog barking at the neighbors and get another noise complaint. Um, <laughs> so if you could go back to say when mm -hmm. you were 12 and you yep. have all the knowledge you have right now, what would you do differently? Oh man. Oh boy. I, I'd put stock in Fortnite first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think knowing what I know now and going back, if I had all the knowledge of what I have now going back to when I, before Twitch started, I would hit Twitch with a content calendar. I would know what I'm streaming every single day. I would plan out my content. I would get friends together and like say, okay, I played a lot of, like I said, I played a lot of Daisy back then because that's what the game was. If we're going back to that point when I first started streaming and I have all the knowledge I have now, I'm going to go back and play Arma 3 or Arma 2 Altus Life or Daisy RP, whatever we were doing, and I would have scheduled content. So it's like, all right, um, Billy, at freaking 11 p.m., I need you to come around this corner with a Jeep and like a loaded sidecar of weaponry, and I need you to pick me up. And then at 1130, I'm going to have like another friend that's in like the cop RP area try and chase us to make this epic car chase. Like I would have all my content way more planned out than what I do now. Because back when I first started, I was just shooting in the dark, man. I was like, oh, what am I playing today? I, I'll figure it out when I go live. I would hit the go live button, and that's when I'd figure out what the fuck I was doing with my day. Now I sit down for like two hours. I'm like, what am I playing today? Like, what am I going to do today? Like, what is my goal? If I'm going to play a video game, what am I trying to accomplish? So like my 24 hour stream, I had a, I had a very set um, schedule of what I was going to play. I'm going to play this game for so many hours and do this. I'm going to play this, many, this game for so many hours and do this. I'm going to play this game. And then the, the last two hours will be a free for all. I'll let people decide at that point because then it's long enough to where people can actually decide that. We ended up playing Uno and asked really deep personal questions while playing Uno. That was entertaining. Um, that sounds amazing. That that was very strange. I learned a lot about some of the people that watch my stream. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I, I would also go in it with um, a much faster pickup on the um, don't be afraid of no mentality. I was very afraid of saying of being told no back then. Um, I would reach out to more content creators much more frequently. Uh, the other big thing that plagues Twitch and Mixer and YouTube and Facebook gaming and caffeine and all these other systems is that content creators are afraid of each other. I don't know why. Um, we're all we all we're all coworkers. We all do the same damn thing. We all have the same resource pool as everyone else does. And for some reason, everyone's afraid to ask other content creators, hey, do you want to play a game together? Do you want to collab? Let's set a day and do this thing. So many creators are afraid to go outside their com uh, comfortable bubble and ask those questions and you have to be afraid and you have to not be afraid of them saying no like there are many times that i've asked very large streamers that have thousands of followers and thousands of viewers hey i'm running a charity stream would you mind would you mind rating me when you're done on this day if you're streaming that day it'd be super super appreciative like thank you if you could do that and i've had them do that and i've had streams where i'm at 10,000 viewers because i've had two or three people that have those numbers rating me on a charity day because it's for a good cause. And I'm not afraid to ask those questions anymore. When I was looking for partnership, I was asking all my friends that were partners, hey, do you mind rating or hosting me when you're done with your stream? You don't have to, it'd be cool. Like I'm, I'm at the numbers, I'm just trying to hold the numbers. You know, uh, we have the same content, it'd be great to have your community come by. You know, let's see how it goes, do it once, let, you know, whatever. And I had those conversations with people and it worked out, I'm a partner now. And like you need to not be afraid to ask other creators around the same size or larger than yours, uh, you know, if you wanted to collab, will they say no? They could. Could they say yes? Yeah, and it could be amazing. Like, it could help your channel, it could help their channel because you're not only, some people are afraid that they're asking because they feel like they're gonna be told they're leeching. Right. And I know that's a big thing where people only want to talk to you when you're doing good. I try to stop in streams no matter if they have five or five, like five viewers or 5,000 viewers. I don't care what day it is. I have friends that are on the partner push right now and there's days that they're at 200 viewers and days that they're at 30 viewers. I'm there regardless. Um, I don't hide my check mark. I don't hide anything about me because when I'm there, it's as genuine as possible uh, because I want to be able to watch their content. You know, are there days that like, are there weeks where I don't watch a certain stream and then all of a sudden I see them at 500 viewers? I'm like, oh, wow. I, I'm gonna go check it out. Like I haven't been there in a while, but I see you at the top of my at the top of my feed now. I'm gonna pop in to see what's going on. It's not because I want you know to 
flash my partner badge and hope that someone follows me. It's never the goal. It's, hey, fuck yeah, I'm proud of you. Like, you know, you're only like you're here, but now you're here. Like, I don't care if it's from a raid or a host, like someone noticed you or, you know, viewers are noticing you and you're growing. Um, that's fucking awesome. I'm proud of you. Like, good job. You know, I'll hang out for a while and just talk to the community and talk to them and stuff. You have to be genuine. If you if you are seen as a genuine content creator in the space, people are more likely to work with you regardless of what you're asking. Um, I've always been genuine with everyone I've ever talked to. I've never tried to steer someone wrong. I've never tried to like just use somebody for their content. I mean, hell, during the whole this whole Corona thing, like I have I have never talked to or texted on my phone so many other content creators I've like, ever. Like during this whole thing, I have texted so many of my friends that are content creators just to check up on them. See, like, hey, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Do you need someone to talk to? You need someone to vent to? I've done this to so many people now that I I have their numbers because of cons, but never talk to them. But like yeah. now, it's like, hey, are you okay? You know, and it's that it's that um, being that genuine is what helps. You know, if you're in it to make money and you're in it to try and grow as fast as possible, and people see that you're like disingenuous, you're not going to get that help. And if you do ask, you're probably going to get a no that's just the way it works you got to build that repertoire with people you got to build that relationship you got to build that reputation for yourself that you know you are someone that can be trusted with you know this and uh that's what's important i think for new content creators and that's most important for myself i was to go back back to when i first started twitch i would tell myself that because i was so afraid to approach other people so afraid to ask for help and it, i think it i could have been partner way 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 sooner way sooner and could have grown way faster had I just asked for help and done collabs and been like, hey, let's do Friday night game nights where you, me, and this other person multi-twitch or whatever at the time and go hard and just play these games together. I mean, oh, it's like, no different than, it's no different than Markiplier. It's no, no no different than like Markiplier and Wade and Bob playing Uno together every whatever day that you come out with on YouTube. Like it's some of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen content wise, but it came because one of them was like, hey, let's do this thing. You know, and something cool could come out of that. You never know. So certain personalities come together and they vibe so well that it becomes like this new dynamic on Twitch or on Mixer or on Facebook or YouTube, wherever it is. And boom, like the next cosmos has just been born, you know, <laughs> like, like people just need to stop being afraid of asking, hey, can we collab? And if I were to go back to my old self, I would have that mentality of don't be a bitch. Ask somebody <laughs> like to play with you <laughs> because, you know. I think so do. a good real life example of that is um you know who Josh Dub is? They make all the VR videos. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. Josh Dub I think Josh Dub and if I remember the history correctly, Josh Dub and Molly were friends. And then they started making VR chat videos. And then they picked up mm -hmm. your narrator because of the content he was making. Narrator. Dude, I love narrator so much. Yeah. Um, and then we got then we got Rekid. And then they picked up Rekid. And it, it's, it's that when you find people that you mesh well with, you know, reach out to them. Mm -hmm. And because it's like, at the end of the day, you know, you want to have fun with it. But that's a really good real life example of just finding people that you mesh mm -hmm. well with. And then everyone grows yep. up together. Mm -hmm. there, there's gonna be times where you're with content creators that you don't mesh well with or you don't vibe well and it that's a thing like some some personalities just work really well together and some don't i found this out through shoutcasting too i vibe really well with certain shoutcasters as a host slash shout, you know play-by-play -play person and then there's people i don't that, that just don't like my style or i don't like their style and we just don't work out we tried it once didn't work out we still talk but other than that it's it's a friend thing not a not a, a professional thing mm -hmm. uh there's people i've gamed with that the content was so funny. I was dying myself. I was dying from the own content that was being produced and chat couldn't stop freaking laughing. And then like that's a, it's a one and done though. It's like, what happened? Like, why wasn't that conversation carried on and another another day like put together to do this again? Because the content was so good. We should have you should have kept going, like should have kept making this like a regular thing because you can keep every everyone involved gross mm -hmm. and, um, you know, Think, uh, yeah, um, so that's that's that. Oh, yeah, there's another example of this too for people who I don't know. I always find giving out real life examples helps me understand things. So if, if I keep giving out real life examples, it's fine. Um, when I right before my quote peak, so a little bit of history there was I I found a niche in custom zombies, um, basic world at war and Black Ops Three. You can make custom maps. Yep. You you know that whole thing. So mm -hmm. I found my niche there. Well. I found um, a person called Abby Joan, and she had made a video about Syndicate, uh, meeting Syndicate. 
And I was a big fan of Syndicate, so I checked her out. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. She mm -hmm. streams zombies. That's what I stream. And then uh, there was a couple other people, Fabio and I Jenner, uh, in her group. So I I low-key pushed myself into the group. I'm not going to lie. I was a very um, blunt person back in the day. So, I, I mean, we all mesh really well. We all still talk. Um, and actually, Abby just got back into streaming, and we did a charity stream together. But I pushed myself in, and we started playing zombies together and these were some of the, my best memories were just us drinking and playing zombies <laughs> it was the best thing ever and jenner unfortunately doesn't stream anymore and i, I feel really bad about it but he had a bad experience and they just kind of killed it for him but he was uh, growing the worst. a lot and then because he was growing i was growing and because i was growing everyone else was growing like we're all growing in the zombies community i mean i started playing with the best mod a mod, I don't want to say mod, map makers. Like they were coming to our mm -hmm. streams and be like, hey, what's up? You're playing our maps. We really like it. So, you know, all the whole community kind of came together all because we found people that mesh well together and we started growing. Now, Jenner was just like, Jesus, the amount of energy this guy had just tires me out thinking of it because he was 110% throughout the entire time. And it was great. It was just great watching him. It was great playing with him because he would just go on a tangent about something. And I'm here sitting here like, we're on round 50. Do you mind concentrating for a sec? Because <laughs> you keep going down. <laughs> and it was nah. great. Like, like, he's like, nah. And I'm, I'm just sitting here like freaking out because also I would read every chat line. Like, regardless of how many chat lines. I think I like at the peak, we were at like 100 viewers and everyone was talking. And I was reading every single line out loud. I was reading other people's conversations in chat out loud. So there I am concentrating on chat, the game, and him, and everyone else. And it was just like this experience where, like, holy shit, this is great and stressful and just so much energy. And yeah, I miss those days sometimes. But um, it, mm -hmm. it goes to point out that when you find... Jesus, I'm like losing my breath here. <laughs> when you find that that group, you stick to I have now talked too much officially. <laughs> me, me, I'm just like, uh, I've said 50 words and now I'm already dying. Um, no, when you find that group, keep going. Because like, like I said, we still talk. And even though some of us have dropped off, we still try to keep it going because we still all really mesh well. And that's one thing I think when you do some of those one-off streams, if somebody has that and they have a really good experience and then they just they drop it go back and try to you know push for it again be a little blunt as i think is my my thing is because if you wait for it to come back it might never happen again mm. so push right. for that um okay my little rant's over i'm just right now reminiscing about all the shenanigans that happened <laughs> just like i do that quite often like i'll, I'll see uh, a viewer of mine that i had when i first started streaming on my old account come in the chat i'm like Oh man, I remember the days when we used to play Mount Your Friends for hours on stream for no good reason, then jump on CSGO trying to get to Golden AK. Oh man, those were great days. Remember that time that we went and just like knifed everyone and won 16 rounds in a row for no good reason? Oh man, that was great. Remember that time that we played Don't Talk or, or Keep Talking Before no, uh, no One Explodes while drinking a fucking 24 pack of Bud Light on stream? Yeah, that was great. I do it all the time. It makes yeah. me so sad, but so happy because like I've seen like where I was and where I've gone and uh sometimes it's sad because you miss those people and you miss people you've played with and stuff like that because you vibe well but at the same time like you've also uh, like for me personally like i've realized i've grown as a person um i've grown you know differently meant uh mentally from other people and uh, my content's changed as i to reflect my my growth and my change over time too and uh but never forget the good days never yeah, forget no. the good times never forget the good days and always feel good to reach out to people because you never know you might get them on a podcast <laughs> yeah yeah, exactly. Um, so where do you see yourself in like five years? Ah, uh, the good old, I saw this question on the thing. I'm like, what is this, a fucking interview? Like, yeah, basically. Uh, I will, during, so during one of my old, so I worked for a marketing company and uh, when they asked me that question, I was like, um, a director here? They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna take over the director. I'm gonna take over the department. <laughs> like five years, like hell yeah. I'll do what it takes. I'm gonna take over the department in five years. I mean, five years, honestly, um, it's a tough question because of how volatile these platforms are. So you really can't go that far out. But in a perfect world, 
which which sure as fuck isn't <laughs> um in a perfect world five years from now i would have my own house my own room like a room dedicated to streaming that's just stream like everything in the room is dedicated to streaming so everything has a purpose every wall has a purpose one wall's a green wall one wall's a blue wall one wall's lights uh everything has a purpose um you know i'm playing whatever the newest game is i have sp i have paid sponsored deals i'm rocking nothing but nzxt hardware and elgato shit and uh i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> um and i have a dog at that point because I, I, if i don't have a dog in the next five years there's no point of living anymore yeah that's why i have the house by the way i got the house because i have a yard for the dog that i just got so we'll we'll say the house is going to come in three the dog will come in 3.001 because the moment <laughs> i get the house i'm getting the dog um actually you know what would the dog come for, the dog would probably come no not right now no probably apartment first dog then house because i want a yard for the dog then the stream room and and then the and then because i have the dog in the house in the stream room i'm now getting the paid deals or well, more paid deals i get paid deals now but i want like more like ninja level paid deals you know yeah. but i'm still me my content's still the same or has evolved to match me but like you know i'm i'm there I want to be able to like post something that just says this is a tweet on Twitter. Like that's the tweet. This is a tweet. And then like I get like a like 300 retweets for no fucking reason. <laughs> that's the that's like the level that's the level of publicity that I want to get to, but not so high to where people are like, let's dox this motherfucker and have like SWAT sent to his house. <laughs> like I want to I want to be popular enough where my stuff is engaged with on a constant basis. And I have a good time and I can like success like I can comfortably live off of everything i do but at the same time not big enough to where people are sending bombs of glitter to my house wait what that's where i want to be bombs yeah, glitter of bombs, glitter you know no you ever heard of glitter bombs glitterbombs.com or google glitter bomb you can send people you hate bombs of glitter it looks like a package like an envelope they open the envelope and poof glitter goes everywhere oh my god try cleaning that shit up oh yeah you could also get glitter dicks too uh so they're all in the shape of penises and poof penis glitter everywhere Oh, that's so out. evil! You know, I love it. This, uh, this, at uh, this, this podcast vodka. This, there's a video attached. This is not a podcast anymore. It's a vod. The vodcast. This vidcast. This vidcast is not brought to you by glitter penis bombs at all. This is just something that I recommend. Uh, if you have someone you don't like, someone that you have a seething hatred for, or just someone that you want to see picking glitter out of their body for like the next two weeks, check uh, Google uh, Google glitter bombs. He's googling glitter bombs. I yeah I am I am I have a few ideas. <laughs> oh yeah. lord, I love it. They are sent discreetly, so they never know who actually sent you the glitter bomb. It's beautiful. It, it's the Random most packed. petty, but like non. It's, what am I trying to say? It's non-threatening. Yeah, non-threatening but petty. <laughs> it's it's super petty but non-threatening. It's just very inconvenient. It's like it, it's like if you were to break into someone's house and you just turned everyone's shit slightly to the left. It would bug me so hard. Like, was that picture frame always that way? What happened to that picture frame? I didn't look at it before. Someone's been here. Who's been here? And there's like one picture. It's Danny DeVito. It's like, oh, I know someone was here. There's Danny DeVito. That was a picture of my dog. Oh, dude. Or what was that TikTok? Um, they got mad that someone ratted them out to their mom. So they're going to steal the, all their left shoes. Ouch. I deleted TikTok. They were um they were blacking out uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, hashtag. If you used it, they were taking down your video. So Seriously? I deleted TikTok because of that. What the fuck? I, yeah, I don't I don't I don't support platforms that don't let free speech happen. So, mm. so I deleted. I yeeted that shit off my phone really quick. The moment I saw that, I was like, nope. My girlfriend sent it to me. She's like, check this out. I read up on. It. I'm like, oh, goodbye. I was I was a TikTok creator. So it was. Was not anymore. That's not anymore. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm gonna start making shit on Byte now instead. Byte's new Vine is made by the co-creator of Vine, and it's back to six and twelve second clips only. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna check that out because I so, mean I've been creating on TikTok, but like that, delete us, no. delete us, you just delete us. All right, let's do it. So, last question, and then we can rant a little bit. Yep. Um, what, what is your do? biggest piece of advice for a content creator who? To put it in, in a scenario, who's who's starting out in today's world, right? Starting out now, is yeah. Uh, start, yeah, it. start out now instead of back then. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. Don't be afraid to experiment. Um. You know, when you're, 
I actually am jealous of new content creators now because there are so many more opportunities now than there were when I was creating content. Um, there are so many new platforms and there's so many ways to do things so much easier now than when I first started. When I first started, back in my day, <laughs> um, we didn't have full blown integrated uh, streaming systems that made it, that were one click setups. We didn't have um, alerts. We didn't have uh, text, um, you know, like um, uh, text documents that you can like load in for like sub counts and stuff. We didn't have any of that. It was literally us a webcam and a game and a thing that was probably yelling at us that our CPU was about to explode because computers back like consumer hardware back then, if you didn't have the top of the top of the top of the top, your shit was going to explode if you were running OBS or Xplode because it wasn't optimized for consumers. It was optimized for small production studios. And, um, you know, we I used something called T-Notifier. T-Notifier was its own web browser that was just a green canvas. It was just green. And you had to window capture that. And you couldn't, it couldn't be minimized. It couldn't be put underneath anything. It had to stay on top because you had to window capture it because all the streaming software didn't know how to handle program windows mm -mm. so everything you did had to be on top so if you had one monitor <laughs> you had no alerts sorry bud no oh, no you no know what sound. i did there was there was no gifts it I, was just text this is what i did i had my game windowed and i had a small little section below it that was green screened out mm -hmm. and i used that <laughs> that worked yeah that I worked i don't know how the fuck that uh, worked i was fortunate enough to I was fortunate enough to always have a second monitor. For me, my TV was my gaming, and then my, my monitor was for everything else. And uh, I made things as compact as possible on that. Um, I've eventually upgraded. Now I got three monitors that are sitting here like a fucking war station. Um, <laughs> but it, the biggest thing is, like, don't be afraid to experiment because, like, when I was when I was starting to jump on platforms and live stream, I had two two options i think i had hitbox my well, three technically i had hitbox which was gaming i had twitch which was super fucking new that no one was on it yet and i had jtv i started on jtv way different system way different content uh it wasn't meant for gaming that's why they made twitch and then they made twitch back into jtv so what you're on right now is what jtv was with a lot less games but then people started using it for gaming so they made their own separate thing called twitch so if you want to know the history of twitch go to JTV and then work your way forward because that's how you end up getting here. But now they've reverted back everything to JTV anyway because everyone's like, where's music? Where's art? Where's all this other stuff? And Twitch is like, all right, you guys want it. We'll, we'll produce it because now we're making a lot more money than JTV was. So yeah. there you go. Um, oh, don't man, be afraid to experiment, you know. though. There are so many possibilities out there. You know, there's more than just Twitch. There's Twitch. There's Mixer. There's YouTube gaming. There's Facebook gaming. There's Caffeine. Um, there's so many other different platforms you can try now. And every one of those platforms is uniquely different based on content that you want to create. So if you're new and you're coming into the streaming uh, scene and you want to try it out, don't be afraid of something like Restream.io. Check out that website. You can connect all these platforms together and stream on literally everything at one time without any extra tax load on your PC and see where you grow the fastest. And then wherever you happen to grow the fastest with your content, take your cancel all the other ones and go that route. If you're not an affiliate, you're not bound to any contracts. You're not bound to Twitch. You can restream whatever you want. So if you're not an affiliate, you can stream on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook if you wanted to, or Twitch Mixer and, and, uh, and Facebook Gaming if you wanted to. And you can just see where you grow. And then from there, just take your content to the next level. So you build your community, be there for them, always stay active with them, get into the streaming communities that have discords never make your own discord at first always wait until you have a community of your own before you make your own discord otherwise you'll get sad <laughs> um no i'm serious if you have no, your own yeah, discord no, right. no one's ever active in it it, it, it can kind of get depressing you look at your own discord it's like oh wow i haven't seen any activity in this in like three weeks join a join a a, a community discord first then as you grow and become a community of your own make your own discord that way there's always constant you know flow of conversation um, I mean, it's a step-by-step -step process. Like I could honestly go on all day about what those steps are and how to grow from zero to hero and all this stuff based on what goes on today and the knowledge I have now. If I were like, I've, I've done the experiment. I have literally made a whole new brand new Twitch account. And in one month I was an affiliate with an average of like 15 viewers without telling people about my other account without, I just wanted to see what would happen if I were to start fresh what would i do and how fast can i get that account affiliate i now have seven twitch accounts people don't know any of them besides two i have a bot account 
Paul the Head Crab, which my bot and admired Plague. I also own Admiral Plague because everyone kept calling me fucking Admiral Plague for years. So guess what? I got the name, whatever. And then I have a bunch of testing ones for doing different things because I like to test stuff live without having an audience so I can make sure it looks good. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm a perfectionist. I like I said, I work in broadcast. I want to make sure things look nice. So I can go on for days about this. I could probably write a book about this, honestly. I, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna I'm releasing a book at the end of the year about streaming. It's no, gonna be like Ashney Christ's book, but a lot more like step by step, a lot less general, I guess. I've actually just like found her recently when I was doing Ashley? some research. Yeah, man, we've been friends for years. I helped. I, I, I'm not gonna say I helped her to get where she's at but I've definitely helped her in the streaming scene of becoming a stream coach because she was getting her stream coaching stuff all sorted out while I was doing it on Streamlabs before she started doing anything like that because she was just doing YouTube stuff before that and stream before that. Um, and then she came to me and was like, hey, like you're doing awesome stuff. Like, how can we, can we work together? Can we do something? Can you help me? Hell yeah. Like more people like me? Fuck yeah, let's go. Like, let's let's help each other. Let's do a thing. And she's been doing awesome. Like, you know, she got a whole stream coaching thing going. She wrote a book. Uh, she's living with her new boyfriend and they're doing awesome together. Like, I'm super proud of her and what she's accomplished, and how well she's grown. And, uh, you know, she's another example of like um, a stream coach that may not have at the time that started doing uh, like coaching and stuff like that may not have been a partner at the time, but they were growing fast enough with their own advice that it was helping others significantly. Yeah. Same thing with me. I wasn't a partner when I first started mine. By using my own advice, I became a partner and I helped many others, you know, accomplish very similar things or at least their goals. And, um, you know, it's nice to see. And uh, Ashley is awesome. Like her content's great. If you, if you don't know who Ashley Christ is, check out her YouTube, check out her Twitch channel. She has one of the nicest fucking communities I think I've ever been a part of. And I've, I'm honored to have been able to work with her and help her with certain things and, uh, you know, see where she's been. So if you haven't, if you don't know who Ashley Christ is for all the viewers out there and you go check her out. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to link her yeah. YouTube in the description because yeah, I've, been, I've been, I've been like binging her videos because when I came back, I, um, I was looking at my, like my bots and everything. I was like, what do I need to change? Because I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. I started looking to it, really paying attention to everything. And then I was like, okay, I know what content I want to make. I know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to help other people. This was the whole point of me getting into Twitch is like, I just want to help other people. Because when I started, I was in a really shitty situation. I was just like, I just want to inspire people, make them feel better. And then now my content's like, okay, I want to help people grow. And <clears throat> I was binging her videos and I was like, holy shit, why didn't I think of any of this? Mm -hmm. She has some really good content and things that... See, like it, if, like once again, if you go back to the like, what what would I do to myself if if I went back to when I first started Twitch? There are so many little tiny things that people don't get about branding or marketing or their own content or how to make tweaks. Like there are so many little tiny things that can improve your content tenfold with just a click of a button or a quick adjustment of a slider. And you're like, oh my god, that's so much better. That's so much more unique. And uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, revolutionary. Um, some of the stuff that you know people don't think about yeah she's been able to at least put, put out there so yeah like I, I don't know if she made the video on twitch studio or somebody did but like literally i went in i found twitch studio and i was like holy shit i can make my own graphics with everything that's already included like on my stream mm -hmm. everything in there all the graphics are preloaded from twitch studio i just tweaked a bunch of shit that's it and i'm so happy with it like my like, oh I, this honestly, looks awesome <laughs> I have honestly never even seen what Twitch Studio even looks like. I refuse to use it because I know it's a it's a first party software. I know it's not going to have everything I need. <laughs> no, it, it it definitely has. A, it's missing a lot of features that I want. But for right now, it works for me because like if you're new and you have no idea what the hell you're doing, something like that is perfect. Or like Streamlabs OBS, one click setup, one click setup for overlays and a full blown broadcast suite done i'm, I'm Me, sorry but slobs will I, I, blow your cpu it, it's almost done it to mine <laughs> i i literally stream for 24 hours on saturday and never cracked three percent i'm also on the preview build i don't use i don't use the the public build i use the preview build i don't I, I use the preview build of slobs and xsplit i don't use the public ones okay <laughs> well damn <laughs> also i mean i'm streaming on so, an eight little bit gen i5 so i'm a little oh. a little behind I um, just uh, I just put in a brand new Ryzen 9 3900X yesterday. This shit is like 
my PC turned on and everything was up already before like before I even got to like the loading screen of like put in your password. I'm pretty positive all my programs were loaded ready to go because I was hearing music from Spotify playing before I put my password in. I was like, what? <laughs> I opened it up like, oh, everything's already up. Like this usually takes like 20 minutes. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, no, it's. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! I I cannot wait for my baby. I mean, I'm still gonna need to upgrade it eventually, but I'm just so happy to not have to deal with. Oh, mm -hmm. I have to I have to prioritize what programs I'm gonna run through administrator and what programs I'm not, just to make sure my stream Oof. doesn't crash. I'm so glad I never had to worry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I I know what it's like. Is like when I was in my apartment, I had a really good build. When I first started streaming, I had a really good build. I mean, all my desktops have been really good builds. And then I, for some reason, I, okay, I, I traded my old desktop for a motorcycle. Why? I don't know. Because motorcycle's not functioning right now because I tore it apart and forgot to put the engine back together before I moved. So it's still down in the car. Oh, no. Um, so it's not, I'm not even using it right now. And we got me a laptop so I could play VR because I got a VR headset. And I looked up laptops so I could play VR and this is the one I found. I was like, all right, cool, great. And then I started streaming with it. <laughs> oh, the perfection in, in me, the perfectionist in me just died when I saw what I couldn't do. Help. <laughs> For real, I was just like, ah, please, please, please. Like, I, look at, I look at your setup and I'm like, okay, cool. I really like this. I really like this. I love what it, all the quality. And I'm like, okay, so what would I use? What would I not use? Because like the lights is a big thing for me. I always wanted the lights and... You know, I want to do. Wait, okay. It's so like with the new RTX that's coming out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> sorry, I just love RGB. It's so beautiful. Uh, where, hold on. Where's 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 the fun thing? Hold on, I'm not sure if it'll still work or not. I think I turned off my. Oh, I turned off the man. Never mind. I um, I told you I have this thing called Scream, where if uh, if you're a subscriber, you can use Scream one through three, and my lights will go instead of color, they'll be straight white, and then they'll flicker really fast and the elgato light will also flicker so it looks like i'm in a creepy ass hallway and a scream will go off like super loud it also happens for subs too so when someone subscribes it all goes crazy um <laughs> if i get like a host in a raid like if i get a raid uh this light here is red this light here is red but this one here is blue and then it'll alternate blue blue and red and it keeps going back and forth a siren like Whoo! oh dude that's like so a cool. race to play siren so i have like all these different like reactions and stuff that happen for different things for like follows and raids and hosts and bits bits it goes to a rainbow so it's like blue purple yellow green orange whatever it's like like a moving rainbow across um of color there's a lot of cool things uh whenever you decide to get or or can upgrade to um phillips stuff or nano leaf or phillips is much cheaper than nano leaf just saying mm -hmm. um <laughs> i i can definitely nano help i can definitely help uh set all that stuff up for twitch for like channel points because my channel points run all this too my my viewers can use channel points to change the colors wherever they want so, so they compete they, oh yeah i'm gonna need, color up. i'm gonna talk to you because like about that because i really want to add more to follows i'm like like for my for me my sub donation is is crab rave so it just switches scenes to a video like everyone crab else rave. how original I, i'm sorry i just love this song so much <laughs> So like yeah, and like the video will play the music video. It'll play the music video, and then I'll come back and I'll be dancing a little bit. Um, oh man, Crab Rave, Sandstorm, and uh, Brain Power—the three most used songs for subscriptions. So good, I love it. And I love it. Oh, also like fuck. Oh, what I was gonna say earlier is the. Did you see about the RTX, the new RTX graphics cards? I'm not sure if it's out yet, but they had a feature where you could green screen yourself without having a green screen. Oh, so it's like uh, VCam from XSplit, but RTX version. RTX is doing some really crazy things. Their um audio quality, their audio um, noise suppressor. Holy shit! Mm -hmm. Um, you. Can if you, I mean, that's if you have an RTX card right now, that's available to everybody and some um, uh, GTX cards have it too. Uh, some are available. I think it's like the 1080 Ti are, are available for that in the 1066, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, anyway, man, that, that's so wild. I can't use it because I use the mixer. Mixers can't use the RTX uh, software because um, it, it fucks everything up. But if you don't have a mixer and you want to noise suppress or noise gate, it's fucking phenomenal. It's like you can have 20 dogs barking and like someone screaming uh in front of you and it won't pick any of it up and <laughs> you're like up. hi everyone yeah hi, how you doing and it sounds so crystal clear and so they're doing something similar with that where they're updating with the green screen and the cool things that you could do with it is like you mm. can have double webcam right so you can have your background 
without having to mess with anything. And then you mm -hmm. just double um, your webcam and then add that effect on the second webcam. And then so you can have color effects on just on you, but your background doesn't change. Or you could have yourself coming out of your webcam box, but your background again doesn't change. There's so many cool things that I have like a million and one ideas and I'm just like, need to finish the build so I can do this. Cause I, I have, I believe I have the right card. Actually, I don't know. Do I? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm still working on fucking wiring a webcam up to the ceiling so I can get an overhead shot of what my studio looks like from the back essentially. Cause it's like the webcam's gonna be like right where this top shelf is over here, but on the ceiling aiming this way. So it's like, here's the, what the inside of the studio looks like for me, like what I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, Cause it's cool. Cause like I have, um, I installed like rods throughout the entire basement ceiling. I have curtains around the entire place and I have audio foam squares uh, attached to the curtains and uh, you know, like a, a checker pattern grid throughout the whole mm -hmm. thing. So it's soundproofed. Um, and I'm gonna have like, I'm eventually taking the key light and actually hanging it from the ceiling upside down over there. So it's not like in my face. Sometimes if you have a light, a light source in the front too close, it starts to um, like overexpose your face when you have like a white screen in front of you too. Um, but I, I don't know, like, I don't, I think my Kiyo had a new driver update or something. Cause like my webcam looks fucking crispy today. And I was like, what's going on? Cause it usually looks like shit. So <laughs> <laughs> it looked really good today. I'm like, I'm going to keep this here. Bless, bless the new install. Dude, so. for real, like I, I've, I had a, I have this LED that I've had for a while. I just never had the power cord. Cause when we bought it, it didn't come with a power cord. So we bought it and I had. I have a little gorilla tripod, but it's like a cheap Chinese version. And I put that on my TV because it's far enough back so it'll shine. And we just recently started putting it on a tripod behind my setup. And oh my God, hmm. it's so much better. Because yeah. It, it's, yeah, that's one thing I noticed too, is like when oh. they're, things are blowing Is up. that my house on fire or your house on fire? That would be your house. That's, that's my house on fire. That's house right. on fire. We keep going. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Um, See, yeah, it's already off a of fire. Look at that. Look at that. It, it got distinguished. Um, yeah, yeah See? Some... I, I actually like I, I did like this in my Philips uh, system. My my Google Home Assistant was like, yes, admired plague. I'll take care of the fire for you. And it came out like a little uh, looks like a Dalek from um, Doctor Who just sprayed down the fire that's upstairs. That just happened because my dog knocked over a something. I don't know. A candle. <laughs> <laughs> streamer streamer setup one on one. Nah. Make sure to have a Dalek to extinguish fire yeah, so you don't yeah, have make, to make stop. Sure you, yeah, make sure you have your Dalek with you when you're streaming. It's part of your setup. It's definitely needed 100%. Like the first thing you should buy before you go with audio, buy a Dalek so that it can take care of your fires while you're sitting here. So you can literally go, this is fine, and, and just chill. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, before we end the podcast, of course, I need you to plug yourself to the extent what is your Twitch, what is your YouTube? If you have, do you have YouTube? Yeah, you have YouTube. I got everything. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I like, yeah. I got a whole bunch of like streaming tip videos on YouTube. Yeah, I hope I got YouTube. <laughs> I was old, like, but what? Um, oh, yeah, plug yourself. Come on. Yes. So uh, you guys can find me uh, everywhere. Uh, Admired Plague. Literally every single social media network. My name is Admired Plague. It is Instagram, Twitter. Uh, the only thing I don't have is Facebook. That's personal. I I don't do Facebook for streaming at all. Um, but Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, even LinkedIn has my name, Admired Plague, on there. Um, Weirdly enough, I, I, we've already said the F-bomb a couple different times, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming I could say this, but Pornhub a community, I'm there as well. <laughs> I'm verified. Um, I don't, I don't, I make safer work videos. I post all my um, like Battle Royale uh, highlights and clips from like my single player games on Pornhub uh, because they get more views than YouTube does because people are looking for porn of certain characters. So if they type in like, um, Anya or something from Gears or they look up Bangalore or whatever they're gonna get my highlight reel instead and it's really funny so I actually put enough content up there and got enough views on it to where I got verified on Pornhub <laughs> so if you're, if you're interested in checking out any of my video content while you're also surfing the tube uh, you know you can check it out <laughs> if you need a break before spank <laughs> so when I literally say my name is everywhere it's everywhere <laughs> because I will never turn down an opportunity to put my name on a platform just in case I need to create content over there. Do I make much content over on Pornhub? No. Are there a couple of videos? Yes. Is it pornography? No. It's all safe for work. Fun fact, Pornhub has a whole safe for work network in a whole area just for like safe for work content. Uh, there's like art, there's videos. It's like YouTube, but there's just porn ads. I don't know. Dude, Pornhub <laughs> is going to take over YouTube. Oh my God. <laughs> 
Dude, no, seriously, when um when Tumblr said they no longer were doing uh, NSFW or certain art and stuff, Pornhub's like, we have a whole entire message board of just safer work stuff. So if you want to put your art over here and get more views out of it, here, here you go. Here's a space. Beautiful. It's really funny. So uh, yeah, like I said, if you if you want to check me out, I am on literally every platform besides Facebook because that's, that's my own personal stuff. So I can yell at my family for being dumb. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, you can catch me every Monday on uh, twitch.tv slash metathreads. I produce and host most of their tournaments every single week. Uh, this upcoming week is League of Legends on Monday. That'll be Monday the what? Uh, the 9th, 8th. Monday the 8th, I'm going to be hosting League of Legends. I'll be shoutcasting and producing. I produce every show that goes on Monday at Meta, um, but I shoutcast most of them. We just got done doing four Call of Duty events where we gave out over $2,000 um, in cash and then about $5,000 in prizes. Um, and we have four more events to go. I'll also do me doing Valorant as well, shoutcasting. And you guys can find me pretty much every single day on Twitch, twitch.tv slash admired plague. I stream in the mornings for the most part, but I don't stream on Fridays. Um, but I always have my tweets go out when I'm live. When I'm going to be going live, I always give you guys like a 30 minute buffer saying, hey, I'm going live soon. Um, here's what we're playing today. Uh, then I usually go to the bathroom and then come downstairs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's what I do right now. Um, I, I just been streaming and doing content for uh, esports stuff. That's been the life so far. So that's everything. And I want to thank you, Wolfie, for having me on. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it was nice to hear from you and have you reach out and say, hey, I want you on the podcast. Let's talk about some stuff. Like, all right, yeah, cool. Thanks let's for go. being my first is, guest. Uh, oh, wow. Hell yeah. I'm not yep. guest numero uno. Yeah, you're guest um, numero uno. I am. Yeah, so this is uh, the second podcast I've been on in two weeks. I was on one last week for uh, Meet the meet the, uh, meet the the Community. Um, so I'm, I'm a community manager in the gaming industry, and I take care of a lot of, like, large groups of people. So um, one of my friends who works for Adult Swim Games as their community manager had me on his show to talk about uh, Twitch and everything that's going on. So that was really cool. Um, but yeah, so it's always fun doing stuff like this. So if you're ever a content creator, someone asks you to be on a show, it doesn't matter how small or large the show is, you should probably say yes. You know, remember the whole like apply for everything thing? Yeah, do that because yeah. it's it helps regardless. Like even if one person sees this and is like, oh yeah, I'll go check them out. Well, that's a win. <laughs> yeah, that, that's also got to shoot the shit. I haven't, I haven't had a conversation about Twitch and like things like this in so long because there's been no conventions that like I was like, oh hell yeah, I'm so excited for this. I don't care how long this takes. I can see her all fucking day. I told my girlfriend who's she's off, and she's like, are you guys done yet? I'm like, like seven more questions. It's fine. I'm probably gonna rant for two more hours. It's cool. <laughs> um, I'm just so excited to talk to somebody about like you know just like marketing stuff and things because I have so many like ideas and pent up like just excitement for things that are happening and going on it's like it's been nice to just get some of that out if you guys think i'm hyper on this show you're checking out a stream like it's a whole other level it's like fucking super saiyan seven or i don't know i don't know what is that now it's like going, it's, yeah it's fun no it, this is awesome and of course you are always more than welcome to come back uh at the later episode i think i have two more slots filled so I'm always I'm always making content. Always glad to have you. Whenever and you need content, you can always just be like, "Hey, you free?" And I'll be like, mm, "I'll pin you in." <laughs> I'll pin you. Or, or I'll throw you to my or I'll throw you to my manager. I'll be like, "Here, go talk to him. He knows my schedule better than I do." <laughs> all right, awesome guys. And of course, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, uh, be sure to subscribe. And check out all the links down in the description below for everything that we mentioned. Uh, if you're listening to this on one of the audio sites that I'm planning on putting it on, um, yeah. <laughs> Yep, yep, that's it. <laughs> All right, guys. Click everything. Click everything. Click everything. And if you enjoy the content, be sure to come back. If you don't, I'm glad you were here nonetheless. All right, my name is Wolfgang. This is Admired. I'll see you guys next time. Deuces. Bye.